<laughs> okay. I see how it's going to work. Okay. We good? We good? Mike, we should good? Good? Okay. All right. Let's uh, call the regular meeting for uh, the March Planning Commission. Can we have attendance roll call, please? Kowalski. Here. Keatley. Hill. Phillips. Here. Marsh. Hubbard. Hardy. Here. Roberts. Here. Wise. Here. Thank you. Oh, Mel. Oh, yeah, sorry. Student reps. Yes. Yeah. Here. And folks. Oh. Here. Okay, thank you. We have four on that. All right. Um, next on the agenda are the action on the minutes from the regular meeting of February 7th. Can we have somebody move the minutes, please? Move Cardi. Second. Uh, second. Uh, do we have any changes to or corrections? Anything to the minutes as posted? Who was the second? Was uh, Roberts. Thank you. No, sorry. <clears throat> okay. Um, all in favor of the minutes as posted, say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Okay, minutes are approved. Um, moving right along, approval of the agenda. Can we have someone move the agenda tonight? Move wise. Move. Is there support? Second. Second, Roberts. Any changes to the agenda as posted? Seeing none. All in favor of the agenda, say aye. 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 Opposed? None. All right. The agenda is approved. All right. Moving right along. Public hearings. We have one public hearing scheduled for tonight. Um, it is the Mill Creek Brewery Special Use Review. So with that, we will um, have first of all, our staff and consultant reports. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, so I'm a, I work for this firm, so I will <laughs> sit <in> the house. Okay. <laughs> so we down one more. Okay. So um, with that, uh, we Oh, sorry. Well, I was just going to introduce either the staff. I'm not sure which consultants want to go first, but okay. for so, staff. Go ahead. If Tom recuses himself, do we have a quorum? We, do. we don't have a quorum. We have an action on Zoom um, based on the motions that we've got to read or pack it tonight. Doesn't mean we can't go through the process, have the public hearing, have the discussion. We will come back with a second public hearing in order to have a quorum and take it. So just to be clear, it's partially so everybody un understands that we can't take a vote with four tonight. Correct. 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 So again, unfortunately, all for in the public as well as um, online, um, without a quorum here tonight, we, we can't actually take any action. That includes a postponement, approval, or denial. So, um, but we will be able to hold a public hearing. What will happen is we will have to hold another public hearing with action at the um, eight, April meeting. So we will go ahead and hold the public hearing and we'll have some staff reports. Yes, Mr. Carter. Would we at least, would we at least like to offer the application to just come back as opposed to going through all this? You could turn. Also a good option, actually. Thank you. We really? Can, well, um, we, we could just present that all at, at one time at the next meeting. Uh, I think we'll just go ahead and give our question for present. F would like to probably go first. Who we're going to start with? Six. Oh, we're going to start with their presentation. All right, then. There we go. Good evening. Nate Pound of Dexter Mill Creek Holdings. Also, David Nance, Tabs and Black. Jeff Lovelin. Um, in your packet. So I forwarded it today. I don't know if that's something that you want to show or how you want to read that. Uh, I don't feel it necessary to read my PowerPoint presentation yes. to you. So hopefully um, you can ask any questions that you might have with that. Uh, so we were here before you guys on December 6th. <laughs> Second, to for those of you who weren't around back in 2017 when we originally got their project or a similar project approved by the city of Dexter. Um, since we were here in February, we have continued to refine the site plan, 
uh, refining architecture and continue to move forward, forward with uh, the details necessary to construct the, the project. Um, Nate and Justin have also been reviewing the project with the MEDC to uh, progress in the securing of CRP funding, which is an economic development uh, form of funding through the MEDC. Um, last week, we were able to meet with the Road Commission. Uh, that was following a, a series of communications regarding the 2026 roundabout discussion. Uh, we had a great meeting. Um, the Road Commission is on board, very supportive of the uh, alignment that they that they are proposing. They had to tweak it a little bit based on our plan, but they've tweaked their alignment and we're gonna have to tweak ours a little bit, but for the most part, uh, everything is gonna align together. I'm not sure if Michelle included any of the information uh, on the roundabout alignment that the Road Commission provided in your packet. Um, we are here this evening, well, we were here this evening to seek preliminary site plan and special land use approval, uh, but instead we'll just go through our presentation. Um, we did submit a response letter to the consultant review comments that you, or that you all received and that we received. Uh, we tried to address some of the issues, provide some additional clarification, uh, provided additional plan information, some historical data, and some recent communications from the Washington County Health Department regarding the uh, on-site water well, uh, which included said, uh, the county health department said that the well has uh, plenty of capacity for the subject property and proposal. Um, we also received some additional, uh, I guess, feedback from the staff report that we received on Friday regarding the waivers. I uh, wanted to touch a little bit on the landscaping waivers. Um, in 2017, the planning commission uh, granted waivers for both the west and east property lines. Uh, the west property line is the railroad embankment. Um, so we're not really buffering from anything, which is part of the reason why we have landscape standards for buffering. And then also um, in an attempt to keep the east bank open to uh, capitalize on the views, um, a waiver was also granted for the east buffer. Um, also brought up that we needed to complete a new tree inventory. Uh, we intend to do that as we are also going to update the survey. Uh, the survey data included in your packet was accurate. Um, we discussed that with the Road Commission. I think that their survey data must have been a little bit off, but um, ours is accurate, but we will be updating that to show that the, the building and the pad that used to be there is no longer there. And we will also update the tree health survey uh, we don't anticipate that there will be a whole lot of um, updating because there was some tree removal that occurred over the last five years. And then also um, a lot of the trees were in pretty poor condition, so we expect those would have continued to decline. Um, so jumping back into the project, uh, <coughs> 9,300 square foot restaurant with a nano brewery and a small retail bike shop. So we are requesting a special land use approval for the bike shop as well as the um, nano brewery. Um, they're both less than 500 square feet within the 9,300 square foot building, so they're uh, pretty accessory to um, the, the restaurant. Um, let's see. The site consists of 44 parking spaces, outdoor seating, and then uh, 23 bike racks. Uh, so we are requesting that special land use approval. Um, seems throughout uh, the information that, that we submitted originally. Uh, it's pretty clear, hopefully to all of you, as it is to us, that uh, these are both great uses for the community. Um, the master plan supports the economic development that both of them will bring to Dexter, as well as the pedestrian traffic, uh, the art, unique artisan uh, businesses and retail that um, Dexter is craving. Um, so we are uh, requesting flexibility in our application. Um, as, as you are all aware, the site is 1.57 acres. Uh, the, the site is uh, the largest site in downtown that is available for development. Uh, the site is actually larger than the Dexter Library, and the Dexter Library houses a 25,000 square foot building with 48 parking spaces. Um, so we're hoping that we can get some flexibility on that. Uh, we are constrained again by the railroad, the creek, and the roundabout that the Washington County Road Commission is uh, provide, or I guess hoping to build in 2025 or 2026. 
Um, the city has granted waivers and flexibility in parking requirements for similar uses. Uh, erratic ales was granted a waiver um, and a deviation from the payment in lieu of. Um, so it's, I know that that's going to be a, a big topic of discussion, hopefully a little bit this evening and then maybe again um, at the next meeting, but uh, we need to have a clear understanding of the impacts of, of uh, the city's intent for parking because um, we are asking for no payment for those parking spaces um, because we're proposing to invest over $3 million and generate between 80 and $90,000 into annual tax revenue, plus achieve a lot of the master plan goals and objectives for the city of Dexter. Um, so within our, throughout our submission, um, which was not the entire 1,000 pages of the package, <laughs> Um, we did discuss how our project meets the goals and objectives of the master plan, uh, such as prioritizing redevelopment, promoting recreational opportunities, investing in recreation as a driver of economic activity, uh, attracting unique artists and brands, creating employment and business opportunities, and fostering continued improvements and redevelopment in Dexter. Uh, Nate and Justin have received amazing community support for their project. Um, I think that uh, most of you have received over 10 letters of support from local residents and business owners, uh, as well as um, had press coverage in both the Sun-Times and MLive. And if any of you are on Facebook, Friends of Dexter has had a lot of likes and people are really excited about this project. Um, so again, not this evening, but in the near future, please recommend <clears throat> approval of the special land use uh, preliminary site plan so that we can continue to move this project towards uh, final site plan, submission of MB MEDC funding, um, in hopes that we can be under construction this fall. Um, so our team is available if you have any questions and we'd be happy to answer them. Right, thank you. We may call you up for some questions. Yep, in a no little bit. Um, <clears throat> okay, so with that, would we like to, um, Sorry, so it looks like Megan's stepping up to the plate first. All right. <clears throat> <coughs> Good evening. Uh, well, um, hit the highlights of our letter. There was a lot of things in there, um, but um, and also some of the description that the applicant already um, provided. Um, one thing I want to note is that a nano brewery is proposed, um, but previously um, a nano brewery is not in the zoning ordinance, um, but previous. Breweries have used have been seen as a special land use under bars, taverns, and lounges, and that's one of the special uses that you're here before here you here tonight, um, and also under commercial outdoor recreation as a special land use. Um, Want to note that there are um, several things missing in the preliminary site plan um that are listed in our letter um since there's no action taken tonight um i would encourage the applicant to take the opportunity to then uh revise and resubmit plans so all those are in there um i know that for some planning commissioners that lack of detail often is um one of the reasons that they vote to table or to recommend denial on um certain applications um, in terms of the master plan, this absolutely fits. Um, the, it, it implements multiple goals of the master plan. It fits the vision um, for this area. It matches the, the, the zoning, matches the future land use, um, and also the um, intent of that village commercial future land use designation, which was to maintain the well-established character, scale, and density, and traditional pattern of neighborhoods in the original plat of the village, while allowing uses other than single family for the adaptive use of public and institutional buildings. Um, and it plans for the transition between the mixed use districts. Um, and it speaks about the density of the site, that that needs to be limited by the existing height and bulk of the building, capacity, and infrastructure. Um, and they are proposing a single story building, um, which your master plan now has building types as well as uses. And everything fits except for, and is specifically said in the master plan, except for commercial outdoor recreation, which is not mentioned in any of the future in these categories. Um, but if you look at the goals and objectives with recreation being an economic driver and whatnot, you can see how commercial outdoor recreation would fit. 
Um, then um, in terms, I wanna note one thing on area with height and setbacks. Um, we noted in our letter that the front setback um, needed a variance. Um, you'll note that our, um, because it exceeds the planned, the existing right of way to the building, that setback exceeds the maximum. And this is one of the few districts other than only the central business district and the village commercial have maximum front yard setbacks. Um, so that it exceeds the maximum. Uh, but as you know, there's a planned right of way and a planned roundabout. Um, and they provided that planned right of way line, um, which is not confirmed. Um, but if that is dedicated, and when that is dedicated, um, as the applicant has indicated that they would like to do and can be a condition of approval, then a variance wouldn't be needed because it's going to be less than the maximum 15 feet. Um, so that's a condition for you to think about as to in terms of whether you're comfortable making that motion later on when you can take action on this. Um, a couple of things about natural features. I wanted to note that the topography, there is steep slopes with the uh, going up to the railroad and also going down to the river. And those would play into any of your decisions that you made on landscaping waivers. Um, we've noted that uh, as the applicant has uh, stated and said that they will provide, um, there hasn't, wasn't an updated tree survey with the health of the trees also noted. Um, so we really can't give you a complete assessment of the natural features on the site because of that lack of information. Um, and that would be a factor in any waivers that you choose to entertain on landscaping. Um, moving on in our review to parking and loading. Um, uh, this application has gone through three pre-application meetings. In every single meeting, parking has been a central issue. The one thing I would ask for you tonight is to give some input to the applicant about whether you what whether you will entertain a parking waiver, and if so, is a parking in lieu recommended to city council along with it? Um, in section 503 for sit down restaurants, <laughs> license 12 spaces per 1,000 square feet and gross floor area is required. And for general retail, there's three spaces per 1,000 square feet of gross floor area. Um, also, this is an interesting mixed use project, um, which has some round holes and square pegs for parking, uh, particularly the brewery area and some other areas that were used as storage and whatnot. So when we looked at those, we saw those as accessory um, to the principal, um, that brewery area as accessory used to the principal restaurant use and said that a parking requirement using the manufacturing and for manufacturing of 1.5 spaces for a thousand gross feet of gross floor area um, or 1.2 per employees, whichever is less, would be an appropriate standard to use for that particular space, um, which is only 595 square feet. So you'll see that our parking calculations are different than what is on the applicant's um, cover sheet um, when they're talking about parking. Um, so in our estimation, um, they're asking for 87 parking spaces are required. They're providing 44, 43 are requested to be waived, and that's a 49% um, waiver. The other thing that we would note um, about the subject site um, is that it's outside the downtown development authority district. Um, the, in central business district, which generally matches the um, DDA boundaries, that's a tax income and finance and all of the, and that revenue generated by the new development, that increment goes directly into the DDA's funds. DDA's funds help to manage, build, and maintain the parking areas in the downtown, which this site would use, um, in addition to the 44 spaces that they are proposing. Um, and that was the idea, I believe, of the in lieu fee that's in the village commercial, because the village commercial surrounds the central business district and knows that invariably um, they will use those parking lots that are in the downtown, develop downtown development area but also that um, they may not be able to use the <clears throat> size or location of the sites to be able to provide the amount of parking required. Um, so um, 
your again um your challenge is to discuss and give the applicant some direction in terms of what to do about parking and there are two parts of the ordinance that give you the way one is section 503b that allows the planning commission to waive park or all of the off-street parking required, subject to the applicant's election to contribute to a one-time fee. Um, and then that fee is set by the city council. Also, 501G lets the planning commission permit deviations from the required parking standards, requiring more or allowing less parking whenever it finds that <clears throat> such deviation is more likely to provide enough parking spaces to accommodate the specific characteristics of the use in question. So those are your two places where the ordinance gives you discretion and there are standards that are associated with them, at least the last one that I was talking about. Also, um, in their section 507 requires a single loading area for a building the size. Um, a loading area wasn't shown in the plan. Um, so you can require more, allow or less, allow for less or waive. Off street loading or, or off street loading and unloading requirements whenever you find that the changes are more likely to provide enough on street parking and unloading spaces or that no loading spaces are required to accommodate that. You've done that in the past, but that's usually about retail uses. Um, if you think about the uses in this building and whether the requiring a loading space is appropriate, also probably the applicant will um, provide more information about how deliveries will kind of go um, from this location. Um, in terms of sidewalks, this is another waiver that's requested. Section 312 requires that a new public concrete sidewalk will cross the entire frontage. Um, you'll note that this, the sidewalk comes to the edge of their driveway and then stops. But, and to have it on the other side of the driveway, going into the embankment, going up to the railroad, probably doesn't serve any use. And you are allowed under that section to waive the requirement for sidewalk in part or in whole when no public benefit would be served by extending it across the entire front of the site. In terms of landscaping, I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about each requirement and whether they, um, whether the site plan as proposed um, meets that or not. Um, and when it doesn't, we're assuming that they're asking for a waiver. Um, so in terms of minimum standards though this you can't leave um, the landscape plan needs to be sealed by a landscape architect and a water supply needs to be made. those are non-negotiable items um, in terms of parking lot screening the um the application in the landscape plan complies um, in terms of street trees they're proposing to use an existing street tree to count towards that obviously the health of that is needed um, parking lot landscaping complies um, for tree replacement, again, we don't have a complete tree survey, so we can't comment on that. Um, screening between uses. Um, basically, there's not any proposed. Um, and in principle, this makes sense. Um, <clears throat> but again, we need that tree survey and along with the tree health in order for that to the findings to be made in order for the planning commission to make that waiver. Um, finally, the dumpster, there's a dumpster enclosure shown on the northern edge of the parking lot. Um, they'll need to provide details about the enclosure to demonstrate compliance with section 316. It's something you can easily be done in final, in, in final site plan. In terms of lighting, it all complies with the lighting poles and need to be reduced to 18 feet. Uh, um, signs are always under a separate permit. Um, exterior elevations meet the architectural standards um, for the village commercial zoning district. Um, and then we've listed a couple of um, things in the preliminary site plan requirements that again need to be submitted. Um, in terms of special land uses, again, you've got two before you, the bar tavern lounge and the outdoor commercial recreation. Um, basically, all of the standards for those are met um, except for when um, looking at um, item F, which is the proposed use shall be of a nature that will make vehicular and pedestrian traffic no more hazardous than is normal for the district, taking into account a number of things. Um, 
And you're going to need to make a recommendation to city council to whether that parking is sufficient. Um, thinking about where other parking is located. Um, you have the parking study um, that was done um, for the city, um, I believe in 2018. Um, you have a lot of data that was submitted by the applicant. Um, but I would also say that you have your own personal knowledge of the down of that area and how it works um, and what people would need to do in order to get there, whether it's patrons or whether it's employees. Um, and whether whether people would use whether they would bike, whether they would walk, or whether they would drive, park, and what distances they would go. Um, also, um, the there's the standard of G um, proposed use shall be the location uh, shall be such as the location, the height of buildings and structures, and location, nature, height, walls, fences, and landscaping will not interfere or discourage the appropriate development or basically uses or buildings or unreasonably affected value. Um, the proposed the proposed restaurant brewery that mix absolutely contribute to the vibrancy of downtown, complementing the business mix. Then the proposed bicycle rental rental and outdoor seating will catalyze Mill Creek and bring more traffic to the border to border trail. Um, but again, the final one, the final link, the final standard is the proposed use shall be designed, located, planned, and operated to protect public health, safety, and welfare. And again, that parking is key to that. Um, and again, that's your decision. To, and I would hope that you would give the applicant some insight tonight because this is the central design parameter on which the rest of the site is. <coughs> and if that's not settled, this really is not going to move forward at all in any fashion. So we've got a number of recommendations in terms of 12 items that we feel like the applicant should supply. Um, and then also that the planning commission should make determinations on the requested options, voting space waiver, the sidewalks, and the landscaping there as they left. Um, also, um, you should make a following determination as part of your recommendation to the council on whether or not information has been provided to assess the proposed development hmm. that the special land uses would not significantly impact the natural environment and whether the proposed parking is sufficient and would, and would it affect, would or would not affect public health safety. We're happy to answer any questions um, now or later on in the meeting. Maybe um, <clears throat> we'll go to the other. Um, Michelle, did you want to wrap it up or is Marcus going to? Marcus going to do this. Do a bit. Don Dutton's online for fire department. And then I'll provide you okay, a summary so you can okay. um, perfect. take off your public hearing, get those comments yeah, started, and then start the discussion. Okay. So with that, uh, Marcus. Yeah. Um, good evening. Can you hear me okay? Marcus. Can you hear me okay? Yes. We can't hear you, Marcus. Can't. Um, can you I now? Can hear you. I can hear you. I'm on the Zoom call, but. I can hear you. <coughs> You're fine, but, but we can't hear you. Could be that they can't hear in the, in the meeting room. No, he's not open. Yeah, I can definitely hear you, Marcus. Hold on. Uh, yeah, whatever speakers we need. Can we type? Why don't you type that we can all hear, but they cannot hear. Yeah, I'm letting Justin know. Oh, there we go. There we go. Got it. Got it. Okay. Somebody got turned it. the speakers off. That's unusual. Apologize. All right, we're good, Marcus. Okay, I'm back, huh? All right. Um, okay, well, Megan covered a lot of what we had in our report, but um, we have a report dated February 22nd. Uh, I'll start out, run through the special land use items. So our review is really limited to standards four, five, and six, which have an engineering component to them. Um, the, the, the standard um, four was the impact on the overall environment. Um, our finding really was, you know, the, the proposed uses aren't, aren't, don't have any more of a negative impact on the environment than permitted uses would. Um, and in fact, the bike rental component and the access to the uh, border to border is actually an enhancement um, to allow uh, 
access to the natural features in the area. Uh, standard five is the public uh, facilities. Um, so I'll just run through those kind of one by one. Uh, the stormwater management um, is achieved on this uh, site with some BMPs and some more conventional storage. Uh, the outlet is uh, right there, the Mill Creek. Um, so there really is no concern or issue with uh, them being able to manage and treat their stormwater and have an adequate discharge location. Um, water and sewer, uh, Allison mentioned the project does uh, propose a private well, um, which she also mentioned needs to be permitted through the health department. Um, but that has no essentially no impact on public uh, public water because it's a private well. Uh, and the, they are proposing to connect to public sewer and the sewer uh, in that area um, has capacity as does the sewer plant. Uh, we had a couple of comments in the site plan section of the letter about specifics of the configuration of the sewer. Um, but once those are taken care of, um, the sewer will not be a problem. Uh, the streets uh, was mentioned as well. So there is the roundabout project that the county is programming. As long as the site can be, the uh, entrance can be uh, shifted to accommodate that. Um, we didn't have any other concerns about the proposed project uh, in, in, uh, increasing um, or diminishing, diminishing safety in the area. Um, the pedestrian bike facilities again is um, actually enhanced with this project and refuse disposal is, is the same as it would be for any other project in the area or any permitted use with um, the dumpster enclosure required by ordinance and the private waste hauler. Um, and the last standard uh, with an engineering piece to it was the traffic impact. Um, I kind of already covered that, but there really isn't a concern here as long as the site is coordinated with the county project, which it's going to be. Um, Megan did mention the, the parking uh, decision that you have to make. So that does kind of play into it. Um, but the fact is with the, that's really, I guess, from our view, a little bit more of an operational question for the actual site, because if it has a limited number of parking spaces, that's the maximum number of cars that are going to get in there. So based on that, um, you know, at, at full, um, full capacity, we don't see a, a, an issue with um, any safety concerns traffic wise. I won't run through all the site plan comments. A lot of them were uh, housekeeping items. Um, we mentioned uh, the updated survey and tree survey and uh, site topography that's needed. Um, probably the uh, biggest one, I guess, from a site, just the overall site layout consideration comment that we had was um, we asked the applicant to take a little bit closer look at where the retaining walls are in relation to the setbacks off of the parking and the circulation. Uh, it's a tight site, we know that, um, but, and Don may even touch on it in his, um, you know, the, with the circulation, especially fire trucks and other delivery vehicles around that corner and with having the proposed retaining wall essentially right at the back of curb, there's no buffer zone there for um, any, any operator error in those vehicles. So. In other words, the front bumper of the vehicle could hit the retaining wall before the tire hits the curb. Um, and that could be an issue, you know, for long-term maintenance and uh, of that retaining wall. Um, so we did ask that that be evaluated a little bit closer. Marcus, I'm sorry. You're cutting out a little bit at the end of your statements. Okay, sorry about that. Um, I'm pretty much done, but I, was, I guess the, that was just, the comment was to, Evaluate the, the location of the retaining walls that relates to the vehicle circulation and vehicle overhang uh, in the parking spaces. Um, and everything else I think in the letter is uh, has been touched on either by the applicant or, or by Megan. Um, so I'll finish with that and I'll stay on uh, for questions. Okay, thank you, Marcus. <clears throat> okay, so we'll move, I guess, over to uh, Stop. Yeah. Don't want to say anything but over to see just um, for questions. So Happy, happy to uh first of all good afternoon good evening 
John Dettling, Dexter Area Fire Department, um, did review this project actually a couple times. Uh, we've enjoyed working with the applicant. Um, and they have done some reductions and some um, moving around of the building itself. Uh, so suppress fire suppression is not required. Um, and they have voluntarily uh, suggested or it will be putting in fire detection system for the building. Uh, which is smoke and heat detectors, as long as notification. Um, and we talked about that in lieu of the requirements for a fire hydrant. Um, and I'm okay with that. With my letter, I'm making a recommendation that we do uh, allow uh, this project to go outside of the fire hydrant standards. Um, other than that, uh, we would capture anything that we'd need to do with the building itself, uh, with the Washington County Building Department. Um, but um, Unless you have questions, um, I think it's a pretty good, my personal opinion is a pretty good project. Um, the Dexter Fire Department has, you know, no concerns or issues with the building or the process or the, what type of businesses is going to happen. And um, I look forward to any of your comments if you have them. Great, thank you. I think we'll go to Michelle for now for kind of a recap. Yes to provide you a little bit of uh, more information so that you can have a discussion regarding parking. Um, I just wanted to touch on a few things, um, uh, capitalizing on some of the stuff that Allison said in regards to the availability of public parking in the vicinity. Um, in my review, I provided you, uh, again, touching on the parking study, which I can mention. There's over 900 parking spaces on the street and in public parking lots. Um, in our downtown uh, that are available for use. Over 800 of those are within a five minute walk. Um, and that's as a straight line as the crow flies. flies. Um, and that's measured from the from Main and Broad Street intersection. Um, generally speaking, a five minute walk is a quarter mile, that's 1,320 feet. Um, and that's represents a standard that is agreed upon as a distance that a human can walk in five minutes. So um, again, it's what somebody will walk before they have to drive. There's factors that go into that, and we'll get to that in a minute, but um, to show you what we'd be looking at or what the planning commission would be looking at in order to evaluate this, um, you have to have an understanding of um, where's the person going to walk as it pertains to going to or coming from the business. So you have a map in your um, in the review that shows from the site where people could walk within that five minutes or that 1,320 feet. <clears throat> Excuse me, and how that relates to actual parking public parking spaces, whether those are on site on Main Street or in parking lots um, or on site on other streets. Um, it gives you a, a much fuller picture of what, um, where people can actually park when they're walking. Um, but again, you have to balance that information. You have to balance that on, on um, the distance people are willing to walk to reach that destination. Those factors are going to be things like the street grid. They're going to be things like the sidewalk design, environmental factors like weather and topography. And then there's going to be safety, which in this case might be a mid block crossing on Main Street um, or the Main Street bridge sidewalk. Um, not to mention, what's the purpose of the walk? Uh, walking trips for shopping and dining or errands, even to reach public transportation, um, <clears throat> like a bus stop. Those are gonna to tend to be shorter. Um, and these are standards that are recognized um, compared to walking trips for accessing something like a, park, a public park. That's gonna be like the 10 minute walk. Um, as Megan has pointed out and Allison alluded to, um, you have the ability to waive the, the all or part of the 43 space parking deficiency under section 501. There's a hierarchy to your waiving. So if you don't waive all of it, 
there's another standard that allows an additional waiver if the applicant elects to pay the payment in lieu of parking. Obviously, the applicant doesn't elect that, and you haven't waived all of the deficiency, then they have to find a way to find to provide that parking. <clears throat> so it's a careful discussion for you, it's careful consideration for the applicant. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, for clarification purposes, um, um, the applicant is correct. NEBC will not pay for additional surface parking, and they won't pay, um, or they do not look at um, additional, I should really step, step back. NEBC will pay for site improvements, and a parking lot is part of those site improvements, and I have been able to confirm that with our rep Paul Holtz. What they won't consider eligible costs are things like additional surface parking. Because they target downtown redevelopment, they don't see the need for providing additional surface parking. So it makes sense. Um, they also won't pay the payment in lieu. That would be solely upon the applicant. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Depend whatever decision you make um, as it pertains to parking, whether it's completely waived or there's a payment in lieu of option, the MEDC is not going to not support the project because of the decision that you make in that respect. Um, excuse me. Um, off street loading and unloading, Megan's identifying the landscaping we've gone over. Um, um, the, the inventory is needed. The, the plan provided, as Allison has said, is based on the 2017 or actually the 2016 survey. <clears throat> Excuse me. So it's not the, the best um, at communicating what's actually there for you to be able to make any decisions. So we're not asking you, I'm not asking you to make decisions on that today. Um, the sidewalk issue, that really is a no brainer. We're going to have a sidewalk that goes to the embankment. We're not ever putting a sidewalk under that by that. So um, it makes perfect sense and staff stands behind that. Um, there are some additional uh, preliminary plans, clarifications that I've identified. And as far as the special use, as Megan said, most of them are covered. They, the use um, um, is appropriate as a special use. There are two, section 803C and 803B, as I outlined in the letter. Full evaluation requires the additional information that's needed, that's been identified, um, uh, that needs to be on a revised plan. So um, I hope you have, you feel that you have comfort in the level of information that the applicants provided, the consultants and DAFD and staff have provided in order for you to have a discussion on this crux issue of the parking. <clears throat> Excuse me. And we'll be able to give the applicant the direction you need. As Megan has said, there have been a number of pre application meetings, lots of discussion. Um, the one thing that's been clear from the get go is yeah, there's parking issues, but the city's always, always felt. That this was a good project to pursue. If it didn't, they would have told we would have told the applicant that from the get go. But like all projects, it has to go through the proper process. So um, with that, my review is then being presented. And if you're ready, Mr. Chairman, thank you. Yep, I think so. So what obviously I have an opportunity for questions after. So um, yep, I think at this time, let's uh Open up the public hearing at 7:45. So, if you would like to address the plan, yes. Public oh, yeah, and, and, and online. What's the uh, instruction online again? Online, raise your hand or star nine if you're on the phone. Okay, so online, please. You can raise your hand or star nine, and then uh, I think maybe we'll get through the online. And I know we also have some people in in, in person here as well. So um, we see some hands going up online. So why don't we go through those first, and then we'll uh, get to the public comment in person. So it looks like Chet Hill is your first. Okay. He's so, joining as a member of the public, not as a planning commission. Okay. Thank you. 
right, Mr. Hill, you cannot, you cannot mute. Oh, you're still muted. There you go. There you go. <laughs> um, I'm not exactly sure. I've got a number of questions here. Um, maybe they're worth waiting until next month when I'm there in person. Um, do you, how would you like me to handle my questions right now as part of this meeting? I think personally, I mean, if you don't mind saying some questions now, it may give the applicant a heads up to be able to work on any responses before the next month. So I, I would be okay with that if you'd just like to go ahead with your questions. Like I said, we probably won't get them answered tonight, but at least the will be able to be prepared. Okay, um, number one on the roundabout, I sure would like to hear how that's gonna impact the plan in regards to parking count. Um, if it's gonna, in fact, diminish the number of spaces any more than what, it, uh, what they already are. Um, it would seem like it's gonna have a big impact, but have no idea other than what we've been told. So that's question number one. Um, I'm a little skeptical of the bike rental operation. Um, most people in town will be riding bikes very, I don't know, this is just a perception of mine. If you go up to Hudson Mills and look at their bike rental operation, they're, or they don't, um, and this might not be a parallel, but nevertheless, Chat, you're freezing. Um, you can turn off your video, maybe. You're, you've been freezing up on us. I think we're losing. Oh, have you been hearing me? Well, we, yes, we did hear the uh, concern regarding the bike rental, and I think it trailed off after that. Okay. Well, the um, I think if it's going to work, um, that bridge, that footbridge, needs to go in. Um, I do know that what the applicant has stated, that there's gonna be an offsite location. And I wonder where that's gonna be, where the bikes actually are. The operations will be in the building, but the, um, um, the bikes themselves will be offsite somewhere. And I don't see anywhere where that's been indicated where they might be and how they affect any of the other, uh, the parks, for instance, probably um, the North Park there. So that's a question. The, um, I'm most thinking in regards to the retaining wall, why not locate that retaining wall along the um, property line? So it hardly touches the parking lot for hardwood, wood, and therefore there'd be much more leeway for fire engine overhang, that sort of thing. It's a question. I don't know how close to the property line it could be, but it just seems to me that rather than conforming to the shape of the parking lot, moving it away as far as you can would be an answer to that. And lastly, this is simply a, um, an observation. I, I would have loved to see this. I think this building's great, by the way. I would have loved to see some heights. I would have loved to see two stories. And this has been a kind of a point of mine for a long time. The old Mill Creek thing that was there, you, you didn't know it was there, it was ugly. And it was, when you drove down the road, it was about, it'll be about, or it was about the same height as this is going to be. So my general feeling is I really like the building, but I wish it were a little bit tall. It's in a prominent location. You come down Dexter, Chelsea, you're going to see it. If it had a little bit more impact visually, I think it, I would like it better. That's just a general comment, other than uh, the other things that I mentioned there. So that's it. Okay, thank you, sir. Um, next, next public comment. We can't quite read the name. Nancy Huschauer. <coughs> I'm sorry. Okay, I'm unmuted. Can you hear me? Yes, you're all set. Okay, uh, my concerns are as as a citizen user Nancy. of the border to border trail. Wait. Nancy, can you give your name and address, please, for the record? Yes, um, Nancy Freshour, F R U S H O U R. I live at 7674 Street in the original village. Okay, you can go ahead now. Thank you. Okay, as a, a citizen user of the Border to Border Trail, I have some concerns about the bicycle rentals 
basically the people that use the trail now for bicycles are owners of their own bikes. And I think they're a little more careful with their property. I have concerns about releasing un, unexper, inexperienced people in a crowd. Um, how many bikes are there gonna be? It, who's gonna monitor it? It's a commercial operation. They're gonna want as many bikes as they can get out there. But I don't know if you use the border to border trail, but on a sunny day, there are so many bikes out there right now that I don't feel safe to use the property in the weekends. I don't go there on weekends because the bicycles are awful. I've been hit. They speed up behind you that you don't know they're coming. It's just a nightmare. And um, I have a lot of concerns about that because I think the, the thought and image of having bicycle rentals is good, but I think the actual application is gonna be problematic. I was much more comfortable when it was kayaks because a kayak can't sneak up behind you and hit you. Um, so I don't know if anybody has followed some of the problems that have been happening in this regard in Kensington. There's been a lot of conflict between bicycles and people in Kensington, I understand has had to come up with some designated pathways for people and designated pathways for bicycles. So that's just a little food for thought. Um, I don't know if the path the way is the border to border trail for people or is it for bicycles? So that's kind of where I'm coming from. It's already very crowded for my personal safety and it has impacted my use of the property. So I just want somebody to explore who is this really there for, who's supposed to use it. Okay, thank, thank you very much. Um, Thank next you. Comment, please. Next one would be Mr. Ed Bass. Please give your name and address for the record. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, my name is Ed Bass. I live in the 150 Jeffords condo, basically across the river from uh, the proposed site, um, which I can actually look out the window right now and see where it would be and very much look forward to enjoying being able to walk over there uh, and enjoy the restaurant. And uh, um, I understand a sick transit is gonna be the, in, the, in there and hopefully they'll provide some uh, bike, bicycle maintenance uh, as they do downtown. The real question that I have is when the Zoom call kicked in, the meeting basically was over because somebody, something happened. We're not sure what happened. Could somebody just explain why this turned into an information meeting instead of uh, an actual meeting. Oh, sure. That was just basically we we have a lack of a quorum here tonight. So in order to have action on an item, um, we need five members present, and we only have four voting members that are here tonight. We'll have five after this issue, but because of a, a conflict of interest, we needed to recuse one member. So yeah, I just heard that somebody recused themselves. Yes. <clears throat> Okay, so you will have in the next meeting uh, the appropriate number of people to have. Oh, oh yes, <laughs> yes, we, we would hope so. Okay, thanks. By the way, fully support the project. Thank you very much. Okay, next. The next one would be Nick Jordan. Yeah, hi. I'm at 7550 Grand Street. For the record and i just have a couple questions i'm sorry i missed um so the parking topic what's the per can you estimate the percentage of parking that we have relative to what would be considered to code well we won't unfortunately we can't really address you directly during this meeting but if you do say your questions we okay. could let you have some answers um we'll either get them ready for the next meeting or you may be able to reach out to staff independently <laughs> for those as well Okay. So you can definitely, please uh, uh, let your questions be you known at this time. We just will not respond to them directly. Fine. The second one is um, is uh, and I apologize if this is already available somewhere, and maybe you can just tell me. <laughs> but was there a, a business case or use case prepared explaining the let's say the demand for this particular use? I mean, just curious. 
how the city's made a decision on approving the site for this use. Not saying I'm for or against, only just curious what's what's behind it. Okay, yeah, we'll, we'll have to refer that back for, for a follow-up question, sorry, because we don't address uh, comments directly. Yeah, understood. The final one is, um, what about, and I heard some, I'm sorry, I missed earlier, but, and, and again, maybe you can't comment now, but something about erratic. What about erratic? I mean, that's a nano brewery, microbrewery that's just gone in there. Um, is there any, has there been any concern about, about, um, I mean, believe me, I'm, I'm all for <laughs> free market and competition, but, um, but what about, what about erratic as far as their, the, again, going back to the demand and the use uh, for this type of uh, business use? Are we worried about the future of erratic? Great. Um, okay, yeah, we, we will have follow up with that. Thank you, sir. We just can't uh, obviously direct those uh, right now. So, okay. Um, definitely. Wait, is there anything else you'd like to share? Nope, that's it. Okay, thank you very much. Um, is there any additional public comment online? Let's see. Any other... There's one more, Kristen Bell. Oh, yes. Okay, yes. Hello, my name is Kirsten Bell, and I live uh, at 7815 Forest Street. Um, I've been in Dexter now for about 10 years. Mm -hmm. I don't have any uh, questions. I just have a comment, and that's that uh, I think Dexter is a, I love this project. I think Dexter is a very active community, as are the communities around, and I think that the voter, Border to Border Trail shows that um, by the amount of activity of walkers and bikers on that trail. Um, and so parking as an issue for me um, is a non-issue. I live, I live more than five minutes away, but I'm always willing to walk downtown and walk to the border to border trail, um, which I use very often. Um, I have lots of friends that use that trail who live in town and actually live farther than just in town. Um, having a, another place accessible by that trail would be awesome. And um, I look forward to, to being able to go there. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, not seeing anybody else additional online. So I think at this time we can open up to the anybody in person here. If you'd like to speak to the subject, please step forward, state your name and address. Oh, uh, sure. <laughs> I guess. It's not going to be an opinion. Uh, Tom Phillips, 7175 Ulrich, next term. It's not an opinion. Uh, oh, I'd just okay. like to say, wait, 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 Tom. You got it. I, I don't think that's appropriate. Uh, it's not an opinion. I'm asking to see the applicant's PowerPoint. Oh, oh it's sorry. In the, oh, I'm sorry. Finish. Thank you. Okay. All right, we can do that. Okay. It's in the it's in your packet. Right? In the packet show? Correct. But the people online don't have it. Oh, that's true. They don't actually. We could get, I think for the future for the next meeting, if you want to go through that. It's in the packet online. People online would have to go for it. Um, so it is in the packet. I'm online and I've got it. Okay. It's in the packet online. Okay. We want to be, if the public has access and let them know before the next meeting and we can make sure that if we can view it in there. Because that is important. It's part of our deliberation materials. Okay. Uh, anybody else? Any nobody else at this time? Okay. Yep. Step forward, please state your name and address. Good evening, uh, Sean Keogh, 8222 Webster Drive. Thank you all for deliberating on this matter a little bit and thinking it through. I know that uh, it's not common practice for you to answer the questions directly, but I can come up here and give an opinion. Um, I did see the roundabout concept with the road commission uh, prior to this meeting, prior to it being shared, I think, with the applicant. Um, Chet had a question about will the at roundabout affect the parking and the answer is no based upon what I saw. It's within the area that we commonly have as a big circle there, a big intersection there. So there's no impact there. Um, to the question about the use of the border to border trail, it is for both, it is for all non-motorized users, bicycles and walkers, joggers. Um, so to the resident that asked that question, it was intended to be used by multiple groups of people. Um, that being said, we do expect all users to be respectful of the other users. 
Uh, so if people need to walk their bike a little further or walk when it's busy, um, maybe we need some increased signage to that effect or need to get the education out there a little bit. And I'm sure the applicant could help with that when they uh, at least in the something. So just a couple comments that I wanted to make. Um, thank you again for this. Thank you. Have a great night. Thank you. Okay, is there anybody else I'd like to address? I have one. Yes, sir. Jeff Loveland for Mayor Brower, and I've been working with the client. I just want to know a couple of things on the parking. Um, obviously, there's lots of things to consider, but with the things that have happened over the last couple of years, I, I think people should really think about when somebody comes to a community and they want to spend this kind of money, how that happens, right? We talk about support for economics from the state, but it doesn't cover increases in material costs, the other stuff that's had to go on over the last couple of years. So when you think about a project like this and what it will bring economically to Dexter, I think it's a really serious question to think about the parking because it's a difficult time to get a good project like this. And I think you have to put a lot of extra thought into that. That's all I have to say. Great. Thank you. Anybody else? Seeing nobody else, I guess we'll close the public hearing. Yeah, 802. Okay, so um, at this time, we. Wait a second. Mr. Bass, Oh, he did already comment. Uh, the hands down? I just said it down. Oh, okay. Did you want to ask? Uh, I guess if he had another comment to add. Mr. Bass, did you have another comment? Oh, uh, um, Thank you very much for that. Um, uh, I just had one comment. This is my first uh, Zoom meeting attending this meeting. And I would just like to point out, it would be super helpful if the camera could be actually shifted so we can see who's speaking from the podium. <laughs> thank you. I don't know if we have that capability yet. <laughs> but thank you. I, we may be getting that. The only, the only thing we can see is the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> I think if we get the room, um, other people in the mayor can probably speak to that more directly, but I think we're going to have a little bit of a different setup as we evolve. Thank you. Um, okay, so at this time we can go into some uh, commission. So again, I mean, we our, our intent obviously is to give you feedback. I'm a, a little hesitant, though. I, I want to caution as well because we only have less than half of our members here. So um, I mean, we want to give you as much as we can, of course. But I think we'll open up for some uh, commission discussion at this time. So yes, Mr. Carty. I think this project has brought in a lot of folks who are interested, who are not always attuned to the planning commission. So I, I think it's important to say a couple of things. At the planning commission, it's not our job to tell anyone whether they should go into the bike rental business or to tell anyone whether they should go into the brewery business. Um, plans are put in front of us. We decide if those plans meet the requirements that the city of Dexter has, we vote yes or no. It's also not our job to weigh whether bike renters are more dangerous than bike owners or uh, to tell you to put a bridge in. Um, although I would have had a lot more questions about long-term liabilities and maintenance if you were trying to move forward with the bridge. Um, it's also not our job to weigh in on whether there's demand for a brewery or a restaurant or a bike rental shop. Those are business decisions that entrepreneurs and business owners make on their own. They come forward and do that. Um, talking about some of the issues that actually are in front of us um, that we need to put feedback out for. Personally, I have no issue with the setback. I have no issue with whether a brewery fits the district as a special use. Um, I have no issue with whether a bike shop fits the district as a special use. Um, I don't have much issue with the landscaping requests. This is a very common back and forth between applicants and the planning commission, how much landscaping should be waived, how much shouldn't. I'm sure that's manageable. No issue with the loading area. Um, I trust you'll take care of all those issues and anything similar uh, that I failed to mention. But the parking, we get to the parking and, you know, it's, it's what you want is a big ask. And, and I'm going to explain from my perspective why. Um, 
you know, this is a spot that is outside the downtown development district. The central bis business district uses DDA funds to manage, build, and maintain parking downtown. This parcel is outside the DBA, so it's going to burden the central business district, but not contribute to it in that way. And we have a responsibility to existing businesses throughout downtown um, to help make sure they succeed and to not burden them. And when we waive parking and we waive the in-loop parking fee, we're burdening the on-street parking and subsidizing a new business at the expense of our existing businesses. You know, the businesses that have made us a destination that makes us attractive to new businesses. Um, to touch on a couple of things that, that were touched on earlier, I don't think there's any comparison to erratic ales here. Um, there's plenty of on-street parking right outside the door at erratic ales, and that influenced us. Each of these is a case-by-case -case decision. Um, there's no comparison to the library. This is just a much more intensive use in a much more isolated spot. Um, it's not about this project. I love this project. Um, I will definitely vote for this project. It's just a question about the parking. And it's again, to, to show it's not about this project, you know, we love the Encore Theater and the new spot it's going in. That project really got hung up on parking. They were making essentially the same arguments that this project is making, that there's a ton of on-street parking, blah, 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 blah. And, you know, we couldn't burden that neighborhood with all of that parking and knew it would have impact on other businesses. And eventually they worked out a leasing agreement to get access to parking from a nearby church. I realize you can't do that. I'm only mentioning because I want you to know this is not about your project. I love your project. It's about you're outside the DDA. We have these existing businesses that contribute to the DDA. This project is really going to burden downtown parking. Like there's no question about that. Um, and, and I have heard, you've done a very good job of rallying the community. Um, people like the project. I don't, you've done such a good job to the extent that one business owner downtown said to me that they didn't want to come here and say, I think this project will hurt my business if, if the parking goes over to the street. Um, you know, this, this business owner said to me, if they're willing to invest two million in this, why can't they pay the, the in loop fee? And maybe down the road, you know, we build some sort of central parking lot or even more down the road, some sort of parking structure. I say that not so much because I'm agreeing with it, because I want you to know that, you know, that is a valid opposite argument, you know. Um, you guys have resources, we have rules. One of those rules is parking and loop. Um, so that's that's where I'm at. I, I'm definitely not gonna vote in favor of waiving all of the spots. I'm inclined right now to vote in favor of waiving none of the spots and having you pay the in the fee. Um, and if, if the town council, if the mayor who's here and the rest of the city council want to lower that fee, that's within their power. That's not within our power. Um, and I think that's a big policy decision that would be more appropriately decided by people who have been voted in office. It's definitely not within our power. As to what is in our power, I have a question, which is I heard earlier tonight that, that someone wants us to make a recommendation on if there's an in-loop fee, what it should be. Did I hear that correctly? No. No, no. You would, if any parking is, if there's a portion of that efficiency waived, 503B allows you to waive what's left left over, provided the applicant is willing to pay for it. Okay, just wanted to make sure. Yeah. That um, so if you were here saying, you know, We'd like you to lower, we'd like you to waive some spots, but regardless of whether you waive it or not, you know, we're going to work out with the town council, with the city council, what we're going to pay on that in loop fee. I'm a definite yes, an absolute yes. I don't see any of the other issues as all that problematic. Um, but 
I, I just can't see, no matter how much I like the project, I can't see any good case for ignoring this obvious parking problem for our other downtown businesses at the expense of bringing in new business. And so that's where I'm at. Okay, thank, thank you. Um, additional planning commissioner comment to that? Yes. Um, well, actually, that's very well put. And to be honest, I came in saying, yeah, I'll waive them. And I did not sort of understand the subsidies until right now. So that is, that's kind of that's a bit of a stopper for me. The one thing that I would say about reducing the required amount of parking there is despite the comments that traffic's not going to be a problem, that is a screwy place certain times of day. It just is. You know, you've got traffic coming in from too many directions and it's it's just too exciting at certain times of day. And to have, I mean they can't do it, but if they were to even attempt to have the required amount of parking there, it would be even worse. And that, so to me, limiting the number of parking places or allowing for fewer is a safety issue. I just think having 40 cars trying to make their way in and out of there, whatever it is, 43, okay, because it's going to be often that time of day. People coming on from work, just going to slip into the, and, um, and to have 80 would be frightening. Or at least that's what I believe. And um, <clears throat> so I'm, in, I'm still inclined to certainly not go the distance on requiring all that our owners would say. Um, I, the, I, I would be, I haven't thought it through to make anything, make a specific suggestion, but I think require asking them to make a voluntary, like yet the church sometimes pays taxes and then I something along those lines and can be to be negotiated with the city perhaps to contribute to the parking to me makes sense requiring all the parking I, I, it's not an economic development to me it's a subsidy so that's or, you know it's a uh, i mean it's a safety issue too so that's my comment on parking um i do think I mean, now we get into the easy stuff which is I don't think they need to have um, street trees. <laughs> I think we can just, I think we should just take a big pass on street trees. Um, I think it's going to be probably there'll be some sort of screen, not, you know, totally, you know, slow hedge or something so that, the, the, you know, the parking lot doesn't look so awful. And the street tree is unnecessary between the, the entryway and the uh, railroad. And then I think, again, it's sort of a safety issue going the way because you're going to have to see a lot to get in and out of there. And I mean, even the ramp that will probably take it that way. But still, you need to be able to see what you're doing in a tree. I don't think it's going to, you know, ameliorate that. So I, that's, as I said, this is the easy stuff. I think we should wait for the street tree requirement for the or And then I have a, just a question. Is the parking lot paved or gravel? And so then my question to you is, well, I don't know what our impervious surface is problem requirement is well they have to detain for us though no. mm -hmm. what do you mean by it nope. i mean there's a maximum amount of coverage not, not in the commercial business not in this not, no. it's not in the this. amount of inter interview surface is balanced against the detention is required in this case so yes okay all right and that those are my comments thank you um any anything else Dustin? yes yeah. so so I went to the very first pre-application for the Corollas, and I, I was trying to think in my mind, what was the initial number of parking spaces proposed at that time? Does anyone remember that? It was roughly the same. Was it right? Because it's like, it's was it like 47 or 48? I mean, were, there was a few more in there. So, okay. So I was thinking about that. Um, and I know at that meeting they're talking about having some sort of agreement with the BFW to have the employees um, being parked over there, crossing the street, and so on and so forth. So then we're getting into the pedestrian aspect, which obviously is very concerning on different times of day when you're driving. 
So I, I just want to put that, that out there. I think that there has to be a lot of thought on the pedestrian people crossing that road. If you ever go around the roundabout, like uh, the Miller Road in Ann Arbor, where the kids walk into the high school there, it can be very scary. But anyway, mm -hmm. I just want to put that out there. Secondly, the sidewalks access across the whole property, I think, is absolutely ridiculous. So you could do the partial going to the side up, take that out, that's fine. Uh, water. So I know no one wants to do the water main to connect over there for some reason. But if they're going to do the roundabout, why aren't we going to connect to the water? And then if the well was to fill, does Dexter City Ordinance have a deal that allows them to repair that well? I know of the previous place I worked at, they could not if the well filled. So the way the ordinance currently is written, if a well fails, mm -hmm. you're supposed to connect. In this case, because they received a variance the first time, um, I'm not the city attorney, but I believe we would be able to ask for the gene. Um, but that would, that's not something that's ever happened. So it's something I double check with the city attorney. Because I was wondering about that. So, so technically, they could say they would have to ask and we could submit. Correct. Okay. Just want to put that out there for the business to know that. Um, parking wise, I am not. Uh, Mr. McCarty said it very elo eloquently. I think that the subsidies have to be paid. I am not willing to waive any of those and just have it just for, I think it has to be paid. Because I think it, for the DVA to cover the expense is an unfair ask on the businesses that have been here for that extenuated amount of time for a new business to come in and just be reaping the benefit of that. Um, landscaping, I know that was the other thing. I, I know there was some talk, and, and this was from that, like I said, the preliminary. The pre application meeting of possibly doing some plantings on the railroad track side just to make that a little bit nicer. I was just curious why we decided to completely go away from that. It was just one of my, I know I'm just putting it out there because that was a conversation that we had about that. So I would love to know why all of a sudden that we don't want to do that anymore. Um, that's all I have. Um, Thank you. And I think for my bet, I don't want to rehash everything everybody else said, but the one important thing I think to get across is the parking issue that's been addressed. I, you know, I couldn't say it really better than, than Jim Carty here. I think in general, I have no problem with not pr providing that parking on site. That's a waste of space on that site. It should be taken care of off site. And I agree, Karen had a great comment, fellow commissioner regarding the traffic. I think that's even better. But the issue I came, again, I'll repeat it because <clears throat> Mr. Carty did a great job is you would be <clears throat> taking advantage of the DDA spaces and the DDA lot, which is great. That's part, but those people pay into that fund. And to, I, it's a little hard for me to grasp, but we could come in and in the park, park project that I think we all support, which it could be a great addition to the town. But again, we need to follow certain procedures. We need to look out for everybody. This business, as well as the past business that I've located in there and the future. And I think <clears throat> it's hard to, asked that I couldn't see we we could come across for a different business just outside the downtown and just to say and then utilize somebody else's parking and just say we're not going to pay at all it, it it seems and I'm, I'm aware of the cost of development believe me I know how much things cost to develop I know that very well but I also again I, I have to I, I have an obligation to the entire city and, and everybody in those and those businesses downtown as well so I think I have no problem without that parking on site I do have an issue with no, no payment in lieu for a contribution in lieu for some offsite parking. Because again, I think if you look at these other cases, these DDA businesses pay for that. I mean, and if they waive that requirement, that's, I mean, that's, you can look at it while they're kind of paying for that. And so again, that, that's just really, I think overall, I have some other questions about, they're relatively minor, I think, 
um, regarding some of the bike storage, I think, and, and the loading zone, which I'm generally okay with. But the one question I do have is that, you know, again, with you could get a, a significant amount of, hopefully you do get a lot of traffic in this place. And I think, I don't know how, if you're planning where the bike loading and the unloading, I, I think that could get a little tricky. So I do want you to kind of think through that, depending on how many people you may get there and, and how busy that business is itself. I mean, that's a good problem to have. So again, in a way, I think even burdening you with the parking issue, we want this to be a good problem to have as a parking problem, but we gotta make sure it's addressed. Same thing with that loading zone, because again, you're so isolated there. And with that limited, the way the intersection, even with the roundabout, that could be an issue. Um, one other thing, I know the bridge is not on this plan, but I would think, I mean, the bridge, I, I had a lot of questions about the bridge to begin with, but I think if there's any hope of that bridge, I think going in and, and providing a, a useful service to many people, and, and, and including your business, I think you need to look at the frontage of your of where you're providing access to that bridge because if there's any hope of maybe that becoming a more viable option for extending other trail uses again and bringing more trails on that side of the creek i don't think you have the frontage in between your building like where that bridge is going to go you're not going to be able to get traffic through there so if that's even an option in the future to extend that to another path i think you should look at where that design the project now so that it could accommodate that because otherwise that could be a bottleneck where the pro the bridge comes to your site and if people bikes or pedestrians can't get through to the main street then it's it's only going directly to your site i know that may be good but i don't think overall it would provide much of a purpose for anything else um and lastly um uh, bike storage um yeah the landscaping generally seems acceptable all oh, the only thing regarding the sidewalk is with with any plans for the future roundabout we wanted i don't know how they would be planning if they're planning any because they typically do crosswalks and i know a lot of sidewalks there's no other sidewalk around there except on this side but i would want to make sure we look to the future for that so we, we don't eliminate any possibility for sidewalks going uh, down dexter chelsea and that's not for you guys directly but it's kind of more for staff to see if there's any way that we can make sure that this it doesn't ex or preclude any sidewalks going down Dexter Chelsea or the alignment lining up in a in a safe way there. Um, okay, that's it. So I, oh, that's all the planning commissions we have. Okay, so unfortunately we can't take any action tonight. Um, <clears throat> but hopefully this gives you guys at least an opportunity to maybe address all the staff comments um, and and you know come back and and next month and depending on how so I guess it would still be preliminary plan approval next month. Yes, unless you choose to combine. I don't know how far along you are in this time, but <clears throat> that's up to the applicant now that you have kind of another month. So, okay, unfortunately. Oh, yeah. Do you have any other closing comments, I guess? Yeah, I, I'd just like to add um, you know, there was a lot of discussion about the DDA tax increment financing, funding, parking, and improvements in the DDA. Uh, I think it's also important to note that this project will generate between eighty dollars and $90,000 a year, which is very significant, and although it's not a tax increment financing that goes directly to the DDA, it does go into the city's uh, general fund, and and it's allocated accordingly. And and I I think that that the applicants would be curious to know that um, what the plan is um, for the use of those funds, because if they were to submit those funds. I think that, you know, in interest of not burdening the downtown, we would want to know how are those funds going to be used to alleviate that burden sooner than later, because if they were submitting funds, you know, in 2022 and there's no plans to use them until 2030, then burden isn't really being being relieved for anyone. So really the burden just becomes a financial one for a business who is hoping to invest in so I, I think, I don't know if Justin and Nate, if you have anything to add, um, but um, I guess we'll. Okay, thank you. Anything else? Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, I guess, we, yes. That would be a question for City Council, not for us, correct? Oh, that's true, actually. They would be the warrant because of taxing authority. So that is correct. Thank you. Um, okay, so I guess with that, then unfortunately, um, hopefully you guys got, you heard at least some feedback so unfortunately like we only represent less than half the commission here but again please take that for what it's worth okay so moving right along um 
We have uh, pre range citizen participation is next on the agenda as item five, but we have none scheduled for tonight. Um, item six. Oh, yeah, okay, fine. Reports of officers. We get one of our officers back up to the table. Wait, this card. Wait, we had a form. No, we're just not. Oh, all right. He's taking a quick break. All right, we'll take, we'll take five. Yeah. <laughs> we'll take five. Combat. That's okay. Fine. Okay, sorry. Okay, well, we are out with uh, reports of officers. So, chairman report. I have no report tonight. Um, so, planning commissioners are a couple, three planning commissioners. Any issues for discussion? Seeing none. Um, council, oh, that's right, why is not here? So no council ex officio tonight. Um, committee reports, do we have a ZBA or a ZBA rep is online? Did we have any ZBA last month, Michelle? Sorry. No, sorry. we did not have a ZBA. We have not had a ZBA okay. last month. We're not scheduled to have one um, this month. And we are uh, not anticipating one in April. Um, so either our okay. ordinance is doing quite nicely. That's what we want to hear. <laughs> so there we go. Perfect. Okay, so with that, we'll go back right back to Michelle, your community development report. I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry, Michelle. So, I keep okay. got you off. Please. So for so for my um, um I, I don't have a whole lot of updates to provide you. Other than we have our new associate planner, Grace. Hi. Oh, with me yes, I thought tonight. <laughs> yes, um, so we are really excited about having her. Um, within the last month, we, in addition to Grace, the city hired the assistant to the city manager, which is Jess Kanji. Um, the uh, city, city assessor hired um, an assistant to help her with assessing. His name is Tom. He's been wonderful in the office. Um, uh, Brenda was, uh, I don't know, promoted would be the right word. She um, has taken the job that Aaron left when she retired, which is the utility billing clerk, <coughs> which left a vacancy in the administrative assistant for the city offices. And um, my understanding is we're getting close to hiring someone, not exactly positive. Um, but we're also hiring a recreation uh, coordinator and uh, planner uh, project manager. So um, I know they've been interviewing for those two positions as well. Um, so there's a lot of hiring within the city going on. Um, we've got a good city. Nice. 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 Welcome aboard. Thank you. Nice to meet everybody. <laughs> where, where, did, where did you come from before this? Um, I was working in Canton as an intern okay. in their planning department. Do you need me I will be, hopefully. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure it's next <laughs> month. So. Okay. Oh, good. Well, would you get to attend all these meetings then? I assume like in the, the mic. <laughs> the mic did. Yeah. All right, perfect. Well, welcome aboard. They're usually much more boring. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> sure. Thank you for making her feel welcome. <laughs> All right, so I promise to have a written report for you. That's, oh, fine. that's fine. Um, any other questions or questions from Michelle? Dustin? Did did the park meeting happen? Yeah. Oh, did yes, and I went. And um well, it was pretty yeah. violent discussion. Um they are uh they you know I Tom's comments okay and then you know they were echoed, but there is a much broader discussion. Um, one of the things there, they were very much, they, they seem to be heading in the direction where they want more activities there, but not necessarily activities that would bring permanent infrastructure. That part wasn't given that, it didn't seem to be that. Um, the library um, has a you know, real stake in this, and they want to expand their. Um, use of the area that's right near them. They're not invading the park, but they want to make that, you know, they want to be sure that the park is compatible for more sort of story hours and that kind of stuff outside. Um, there was a lot of discussion about the use of, they're, they're kind of already sort of, you know, <clears throat> they're cutting up the corpse or whatever the right expression is for that building that's um, where the fire department is now. The ways that, you know, <laughs> ways that that can be used um, that would enhance the park. Um, one particular way was um, trying to maybe use it to 
how some sort of uh, elevator structure so that it was to increase access because the everybody kind of agrees that the the hill the slope is just a little too exciting for you know chair users if you're going down that um, into that parking lot the current parking lot so those were the nature of the discussion it was pretty preliminary they really haven't I haven't nailed much down um, but um, but the directions weren't try, trying to increase sort of use and activities and that kind of stuff. So, yeah. Since we're on parks, I feel like I might have missed something because I missed the Somebody asked me going around town like about the table tennis proposal. Yeah, What's that, the table? that didn't really, that didn't, that <laughs> seems to have kind of, you know, you know they, there was some talk about maybe trying to put it where um, skating room is so it would be very temporary and not, you know, not something that, Forever and ever. So I don't think currently not going forward. Pardon? So it's currently not going forward, or it, it, it's in discussion, but it wasn't as. It, I mean, I heard about it two years ago, and there was some real enthusiasm for it, and then it did not really seem to have much traction. In a, in once, that particular meeting. once there were more details with the understanding costs and. Um, What was needed to actually facilitate it? it like Karen said, it's sort of that enthusiasm has waned, but it hasn't gone away. Interesting. Thank you. Um, okay. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> so I guess. Yeah, we finished up. You were done with your community development report, correct? Yep. Okay. All right. So with that, citizens wishing to address the commission. Um, either online or um, in person. If anybody would like to address the commission, please raise your hand, step forward, state your name and address. Seeing no one online, you may step forward, state your name and address. Come back. Hey again, everybody. Hi, Sean Keogh, 8222 Webster Drive. Um, just to share a little bit of discussion. Uh, so, you know, I'm obviously paying close attention to this. It's the third meeting I think I've been at, um, plus some of the pre application meetings. As a council member uh, in this process, I go last. Okay, so I'm trying to let this body do what it needs to do to deliberate and talk and talk over issues and pay close attention to those. Uh, but what I can do, I hope to do, is try and uh, provide a little bit of insight on things that we have talked about. Um, question of water main. Uh, across the creek. Uh, as to you asked that question. We have talked about that at City Council. The thought is that because it's about a quarter million dollars round figures, it's not something that we have in the current budget, but we have looked at preliminary layouts for that at the timing that the roundabout will occur. So that when we go to do the construction, <coughs> we bring the water main at the same time and set it up. Now, some people might say, well, why do you need to put it over there for one business? I think that in the long term, there will be some other properties along Dexter Chelsea Road that will logically desire to connect to the public water main. Water main will want to do that. Will it happen all at once? No, I don't. that's okay. It doesn't have to happen. But as a city, we're planning that. And the logical time to do that construction from our perspective so far would be with the roundabout if should that go in 2026. So I think you'll hear more about the planning for that. Um, I know our uh, water department staff have some thoughts on that and how to do that and where it should go and what's needed. Um, whether the applicant should choose to connect up at that time is out of our control right now, but we are thinking forward on that. Um, so I wanted to just throw that back to you a little bit. Um, with regard to the, the parking fund, uh, the parking fund per se is not a GDA fund. I'll make sure I'm clear on that. That any payment that they would make goes into a separate fund of the, of the city, not controlled by the DDA. Um, it is correct that the DDA generates tax increment revenue from the properties within the district. You might ask, well, if we just put this property in the district, they could contribute too. But if you change the district boundary, all of the taxing authorities that we collect extra revenue from, the county, the library, ISDs, 
et cetera, would have a chance to opt out, which would essentially probably bring the DDA's whole purpose down to zero in terms of their ability to generate the extra revenue. Um, so it's not likely, at least I don't think we'll change the boundary for one property. And you'd be constantly chasing that. Every property that came next would be next, would be next, would be next. It didn't, it didn't make any sense at all. And by that time, the people that knocked out of the tax agencies that are agreed to this up front are, are in, you know, they, they'd certainly pull back those funds. Um, one of the things I want to make sure isn't a misconception is that it isn't just the DDA that spends dollars on the infrastructure within the DDA. Okay, the DDA was set up for one purpose to collect revenue that can be spent on infrastructure and on things like parking for those businesses and such. But I can tell you that just as recently as 2010 or 11, the city paid for the resurfacing of Main Street. The DDA did not have funds. We did that using all of our taxpayer street dollars because we felt it was important to have our downtown looking good and to have those spaces accessible and level and you know, here we are 10 years later, and there's some spots that could probably use a little adjusting attention now, but we're partners in taking care of that infrastructure as well. Going with that. Um, the last amount of money we received, I think, from the, um, the last time we spent any money from the parking fund, I think was when we uh, paved Central. Outside the district, we used some of those dollars towards paving those parking spaces along Central. As it went north towards out of town, north of the street. So north of the street is outside the district there. So, you know, the, those these opportunities or the, the funds that come into the parking fund don't happen that often. I mean, it's a very rare, rare thing. Um, <clears throat> you know, and, and we've had we have conceptual plans for Grand Street to add parking. Those drawings have been done for years um, to improve that. Um, Anyway, I just wanted you to know that it's, it's a team effort when it comes to that. Um, the background, I thought that was important relative to some of the questions. So, anyway, Great. thanks again for what you do and appreciate it. Good work. And if we could figure out how to get Chet in the vote, we could have been. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Okay, thank you. Uh, anybody else seeing nobody else step forward or raise their hand online? We will close the uh, Citizen Commission Invest Commission and we'll move on to old business. Zone ordinance update. See, that's Megan. Yep. Oh. He's ready to talk zoning. <laughs> yeah. Yay. The best part of the night. Um, no, nice. CIP is what. Uh, okay. Uh, so again, Megan Massaminak, Carla Wortman Associates, thank you so much for having me here. Um, and we have a PowerPoint to help guide through, but also probably, thank you, Sean, Brad, and I do, um, from um, actually Commissioner Hill, I do have um, uh, mm. one very specific question for you all. Um, so as we go through, um, next slide. And that's gonna take, it's gonna take three clicks, Michelle, actually, because it's animated. Um, no, it doesn't. Okay. Um, uh, basically, we're taking the master plan and putting it into the zoning ordinance. The next one, um, this is the process. Um, so we are at a full draft for your review in early 2022. Um, and the next step after this, um, and I understand from Michelle that we're looking at maybe having a joint planning commission city council meeting, um, in addition, as an addition to the process in April is that the text is going to be as perfect as we can make it. And then we're going to put it in a program that's called InDesign, um, which how many people have used InDesign? Okay, like, yeah, I have to, I love InDesign, it makes things look beautiful. It is horrible to edit. Um, and so you, that means you have to have the text and the graphics and everything beforehand you kind of put it, you put in like you're almost laying out a newspaper or a magazine. Um, and so our goal is working with you because if we, 
we give you, if we delivered this draft to you in InDesign, when you had um, edits, which invariably will, um, we would be um, probably charging you, we would take like time and a quarter um, in order to get it done. So this is an efficiency. I know that it must be frustrating from some of you that not all the figures are right and not all the labels are right and you want better graphics, but uh, please trust me that they are coming um, and they will be there on the front of the product. Yeah. Going back to the uh, meeting in April, um, <clears throat> City Council would like a joint meeting with the Planning Commission to go over this. Finding a date that works for everyone is challenging. So the question was, how about if we started the Planning Commission's meeting in April early to do the joint meeting before you started your regular meeting? Well, to get feedback, I mean, the rest of the commission and for time. So I, well, would that only be, <clears throat> that would just be like an hour though, would that be an so, earlier, like five or five thirty? Because it's a meeting where not decisions are made, if people could only attend virtually for the the joint work session, okay. um, we could start it as early as five o'clock if if that would help um, for your actual regular planning commission meeting, which would start at seven. People, mm -hmm. the commission would have to be here in right. person. Um, we're not able to find another day unless you want to try and put it off till May meeting. But then you've got you've got the zoning ordinance and you're putting up your CIP as well. Okay. Potentially. But the I mean it's hard because we don't have as many commissioners here. I mean, I won't necessarily have a problem, but I know many commissioners working. What do you guys all think about an earlier meeting? I mean, that's maybe tough to get to. And I don't even know if the virtual option might help because it's kind of it's at that weird time where well because I could be here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, you so, can't. So, so like that would be the hard part because I probably won't be getting off until probably like six. So if I did the virtual for an hour, how would I get here for the seven o'clock? Yeah, I mean unless, right. you, unless so, we took that half hour between seven and seven thirty, use that as your travel time and start your regular meeting at a special time of seven thirty. Which is actually what your time used to be before we changed it. Uh, yeah. A few years back. Yeah. Absolutely. Just things for you to think of. It, it is something that you really like some some idea yeah. of what direction. Well, you probably need to know now because it's for the next month. So, I mean, I don't have a problem, but I don't know. I mean, we are, I hesitate to speak for others. Tom, what do you think? Yeah, doing? I can do it. I mean, I, I could, but Karen, Jim, I mean, Jim, I know you can meet without my work schedule. Yeah. I don't have my work calendar in front of me. I can't say it. Okay. But, I've got four four o'clock that day. I can't, but right. I don't know if I do. And this would be mainly for the like. Is this the purpose of this meeting? Would be for kind of a discussion amongst the entire group, or like what exactly is that presentation? Or it's designed to help anybody on the planning commission who isn't a hundred percent sure of what's here yet. Um, get sure. Um, uh, so sort of a refresher for you, but it's a deep dive for city council before they get this right. from you. I mean, it, it sounds, yes. Or so we discuss it. So is it the form base that we'll be diving into further? Is that what we're really going at? I mean, I know it's the whole thing, but is that the spectrum that to help council understand? I, that's what I'm just trying to get at. I think if it's only an hour, um, what I would recommend is that we depend on everybody. There was a memo that was sent to you last month um, and that went through every single article and what the changes were. Then if we only had an hour, what I would do is depend on everyone to read that um, and then probably spend 10 minutes introduction, introducing the building ordinance overall five minutes to do a hands-on exercise like we did before um some variation um for um folks <clears throat> to use the form-based code and, and to do that and then to come back um for maybe the remaining 15 minutes and ask each person 
to share concerns or um, concerns or questions that we can go. It seems like that could be really tight though. An hour. It, Don't it, any, it is really tight. Is there any value on this shot? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't really want to plan another extra meeting, but like, is was there any like, did you look at the CBA meeting that day that? It doesn't look, the CBA meeting never looked in the council. Okay. I remember when it may not look for me as well. Oh, yeah. And yeah. Okay. because that's the day after Easter, I won't be back. I'll be back. Okay. So it, it, it's yeah. not working on many, um, many fronts, unfortunately. I mean, I don't know because I, I hesitate because I don't know if an hour, like it, it just, it feels like that would be so short. And because and, once you start talking, I don't know how, like, I don't see how you could do all that in an hour. Sorry. I mean, yeah. It's, yeah. So I guess I don't know. There would be no time for questions. Right. I, I don't <laughs> think there would be. Right. And I think. Be two hours, right? Is that what you're I am. I mean, as much as I don't want to extend it, I. I or at least an hour and a half, maybe, because I right, I don't think you'd have any time for questions. That, and sometimes that's where we get the most. I mean, I think that's where people will really get, because we can, although I don't know, examine it in detail before, but we can look at stuff beforehand. But really, where we get the most is, I think, asking you, 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 how is this? So I would hate to kind of short suit that time. Um, yeah. Hey, can we start at 7 30? Or the one time? So well, we did the six. So you have to adjust this. Yeah. And you have to notice it out differently, but you haven't yet. So right. it's not it's not a huge difference. The public, there's going to be a public meeting anyway. <coughs> so if we did have a, a special time um, or a different time from the regular meeting, you're going to get much more coverage about it because there's already a public time. Yeah. And Chet had a comment from my attorney. Oh, I'm sorry. I need to see. Uh, yes, Chet? I was just going to say I agree an hour is not enough. Five o'clock works for me. That's all. Okay, thank you. So, uh, so do we want to, um, so let's plan for an hour and a half and either, I think. Isn't that what we do when we have that discussion? I guess the last kind of joint meeting that we have. I think we did have an hour and a half. I I would need to look at it and then yeah, I um, think so. I think also, but that's good. What um, I would hope is that we could know how many people are online and how many people would be there in person at least a week ahead of time because you would I would design the session differently okay. for depending on how many people are here and how many people are using. Well, I, yeah, Tom, I, what about, like, is there a like, the second meeting? I mean, can we have like a follow-up to that? And would there be an opportunity for that, even if it was like an optional thing or something else like that? Or does, it all has to be public notice, so it's harder to, and I know your time, but that's what I was. Yeah. So what I would suggest is look, we have some limited time tonight. And some material to get through, but um, yeah. All right. So I think what we've heard is one hour is not enough. An hour and a half to two is better. Um, you're willing to split it up between two meetings. And you're willing to look at other dates, but if we could put it on a regular meeting and make that work, that would be great. yeah. And I think if we move back our starting time, we get a little bit. Stronger. Okay. Okay. Uh, I mean, you should consider two hour and a half to two hour meetings. Yeah. I think you need this. Okay. Oh, wow. It's, it's like a year's worth of work. We're trying to I know there's a lot of meetings. It's not like it. Yeah, it's so much information, which is good. I mean, it's just great. There's so much new, but yeah, it's so much new. <laughs> so, okay. All right. Um, so um, our agenda for tonight, and that's the next slide when you can get to it, Michelle, um, is Article 10, use based districts, Article 8, special land uses, Article 14, the specific uses. That's kind of a um, a really dense one. General provisions, um, parking, landscaping, and definitions. And all of these don't have to do with the form based districts. We went over, um, did a broad overview of those last time. Um, so if we can go to the next slide, Article 10, use based districts. <laughs> so, what this slide highlights is how that formatting has changed. So, currently in your zoning ordinance, you have an article for each zoning district. Instead, Form based, as we went over last time, have certain regulations by zoning districts plus the building types, um, street types. 
uh, Article 10 is use-based districts. So all the things that you have in those articles, but now it's a separate section in each one. There's the intent, um, the use regulations that references the use table at the end of this article, which I'll get to. Um, then all the dimensional requirements are the third section. So instead of having a big schedule of regulations with all of it there, it's proposed to be reorganized so that those are there. So if you're looking, if you look in the zoning <laughs> ordinance and say, oh, it's multiple family residential when my site is zoned, when I flip to there, I have in theory almost all the information. Also, there's always um, there at times supplemental district standards um, and those are listed. So that's an example of, of how ordinance is proposed to be reformatted um, and then um, to be more user-friendly. You could go to the next. Um, also, as I mentioned, there's a use table for residential districts and non-residential districts at the end of this article. So as you can see up here, this is the beginning of the residential use table. Um, it has the uses listed, then the zoning districts, um, whether it's permitted, a special land use, accessory, and then there's no marking whatsoever means that it's not permitted. In the notes section, it will have um, subject to sections um, in Article 12 for Article 14, um, and basically anywhere where those supplement uh, additional regulations are there for that specific use. So any questions, comments on Article 10? Right. Keep going next. Mm -hmm. Article eight. Basically, we're proposing to take yeah. about three quarters of the um, of, of this zoning district away. Most of it's going to Article fourteen. Um, you had it set up that special land uses, the process, and then all your specific use regulations. But that then implies that every special land use should have a specific use regulation and uses that are permitted uses couldn't have specific regulations, which is actually not the case. So if you, what we're proposing is to take them out of this article and make a separate article with only, that only deals with specific uses. The other checks change that I will um, note here is that um, there's a proposal for the zoning administrator to allow the information required for administrative review in lieu of a site plan when the special needs meets those requirements. And that's similar to what the Encore Theater was. So, um, and just to make it expressly clear that the zoning administrator can make that decision to help speed that process when a site plan wouldn't be, ne wouldn't be, wouldn't be necessary. And that's usually in the case of the adaptive and usable building. So, right. Um, or if there are specific phases and then specific and a, and a special need use comes in phase two. Go on, thanks. Um, so article 14, um, first I want to go over, oh, back. Is there any questions about article eight? Okay, article 14, these are specific use regulations. The reason I did these screenshots of um, these pages is to show you how things are, format, for, are formatted. The subcommittee felt like um, the different uses should be grouped by category. Um, so automotive, outdoor, in the case of what you're looking at, I think you've got like institutional uses and then outdoor utilities and then institutional uses. Um, but we pointed out that during the process, you're going to have other of these come up, right? And you don't want to have to renumber everything or put, make it be 14, 10 dash, you know, row number two. Um, so that's the reason for you'll see lots of reserved sections in between those groupings to allow for future specific uses to come in. Um, so that's just the formatting. Any questions about the formatting? Um, we'll go to the next slide. Um, there's some changes in there. So there's proposed regulations for adult foster care facilities, senior assisted and independent living, kennels and commercial pet daycares, and small cellular facilities that weren't there before. Small cellular facilities is just really a cross reference to your ordinance on it, um, but making sure it's there. Uh, there are several uses that are proposed to be updated. Um, convalescence homes, cemeteries, funeral homes, places of worship, essential public service, 
storage yards, wireless communication facilities, that's due to state law. Drive through facilities, we're proposing that all those are grouped together. Um, and you just have one set of regulations through drive through facilities, and whatever it is, whether it's a bank, whether it's a restaurant, um, whatever it is, then they have to meet, all have to meet the same set of standards. <laughs> also, in the drive through facilities, um, there's a proposed incentive that if you provide, because um, all of these are going to probably ha happen on those form based corridors. So if you provide a pedestrian area or a plaza, then you can get more staffing spaces. Otherwise, that you were constrained. Um, so an incentive is built in there. I would, you know, encourage you to take a closer look at that one. Um, and adult regulated uses has been updated um, just based on case law. And I'm sure uh, it cites a lot of case law just right in the, in the regulations. That takes about three or four pages. <laughs> um, some use regulations are proposed for deletion, specifically accessory apartments, because that's no longer necessary because of your ADU regulations that you put in and are now in the beginning of Article 14. Hospitals felt that like that's not really something that's going to come to Dexter based on how you out you are and usually the size. Um, so that wasn't necessary. Arcades, <clears throat> um, not only do you see a whole lot anymore, um, <laughs> nor does it mean the special uses that people felt that it needed back in the day. Um, and then um, again, restaurants, specifically restaurants and such and such. You have a section with restaurants with drive throughs, a section for banks with drive throughs. Rather, take those out and just treat the drive throughs as drive throughs no matter what the use is. Uh. I must have missed something, but outdoor classes and that, that kind of thing, is that what we're getting rid of or, or we're adding? Because we talk about making the audience more urban and there's not a lot of, you know, in, in higher density development in downtown, we're not going to have room for plazas and recreation space and tennis courts and stuff like that. And it's not recreation space, it's more yeah. like an out, like, uh, you know, a small, a small pedestrian plaza or um, like, what you have at the corner of Central and Main. Okay. So, oh, so it's a little teeny like pocket. Lead, little yeah, teeny yeah. pocket um, pavers, like seating area, things like that. That's not um, the wrong one. So, um, yeah, really, that kind of conflicts with getting activity out of the street, doesn't it? Or no? No, it does create activity on the street. So it's a plaza. Okay. So think of it like that. Like, um, so I, and if I'm, put, if you're putting in a drive through then <clears throat> you're, you're creating a lot of coming and going of cars, right? Um, and it's primarily a vehicular use. Okay, so, it's really the drive through Okay, that's what I mean. It's only due okay, for drive through I'm sorry, yeah, just for yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, thinking of like Dexter Pub and like trying to make a uh, okay. class. No, so. no, no. no. Okay. And it, yeah. and again, <laughs> A drive through wouldn't be allowed use yeah. in the central business. Yeah, it would right. only be on Maple Road or on Ann Arbor Road. Right. All right. So, Article 14, there's a lot there. I'd be really surprised if there's no questions. Yeah, there is a lot there. <laughs> it's, it's a lot of what's in 14 was in Article 8. Right, which was the special right. use uses, but also those things that are that were in Article Three. Article Three is now really much more stripped down. Yeah. Well, there's not a lot that's taken out. I mean, she's kind of reorganizing and combining. Like you said, right. it makes sense to have all the drive through, you know, those regulations in one place rather than spread out. So, right. No, I think it's good. I mean, you didn't really add anything controversial. So. Okay. Could you quickly go through the regulations for deletion? Sure. Um, regulations for deletions. So accessory apartments. Um, you have that in. Yeah. 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 So hospitals. <laughs> that like you know. Right. Um, arcades. Um, most of a lot of older zoning ordinances treat arcades like they treat treated billiard halls and. Um, <laughs> centers. Some people pumps hanging out from the arcade. You know, yeah. it's a real issue. Right. <laughs> so and most of your. You know, I have two teenage boys, and an arcade to them is like what? Because right. they have everything they need in their phones or their computers. So, 
Um, Great, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that. I put this down. Um, article five, parking. Um, so there were a bunch of sections um, from other articles that we moved here, um, specifically streets, roads, and other means of access, um, pedestrian access, and concrete curb and gutter requirements and parking lots. These were kind of scattered. I think it was article three, and then one was, I, I think, in landscaping, yeah, it was in landscaping. Yeah. Um, then also, um, where anytime there's a waiver allowed by the planning commission, we allow similar waiver abilities for administrative site reviews by the zoning administrator. So to give that person that power in those very specific instances, um, we tried to make the process for waivers and reductions clearer and trying to group them all together. Um, and then, because again, they were kind of scattered about um, making the parking, some of the parking requirements are proposed to be reduced for several uses. Um, and we wanted to, and changes to incorporate regulations based on the form based districts and street types are proposed in access management. So right now you have access management, and that means where driveways are. Um, and you'll ha you have a general thing, a general one, and then some specific things, dimensions for Dexter and Arbor Road, because you have that. And said, okay, well, there's Dexter and Arbor Road and Baker Road, but also Village. There will be other streets going through Village Commercial and CBD. You don't want curb cuts in Central Business District, so it made more sense to build those out based on those form-based um, street types. Um, so that's a that's a layer that was added because of the form-based regulations, but within there. <coughs> um, any questions on those before I go to the next thing? Because this is going to require some interaction on the village commercial, because I'm 99% I have this one. All right. So I think it was the subcommittee, and Karen and Tom, you need to correct me if I'm wrong, last month, we talked about the village commercial zoning. And based on the discussion you had tonight, they they want to rethink some of the things that we talked about. As they said, I think the subcommittee was saying, if it's adjacent to CBD zoning, or maybe it's here at the planning commission, we shouldn't require parking. Um, and so that would be in the cases. And that's why I chose the Google, um, street, Google View street shot of Grant, because those are proposed to be zoned village commercial. They're right adjacent to central business district. All right, I'm, I was quite confused now. Sean sat down and said, oh, no, the you know, parking fund is not the possession of the DEA. It, so I, you know, I think Jim's point about subsidies is a good one that I did not get when I thought this was such a good idea. Um, but I also think, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of, I keep going back to the erotic Ales discussion and you know, that if they were both locked over, you know, and they were, you know, now they're, you know, gangbusters and probably buying and selling all of us, but at the time they really had nothing, you know, they were really scraping it together, but it sounded like anyway to start that business. And, and the, you know, illegal parking fee was just kind of prohibited. Um, and I thought, well, that's, we don't want to, we don't want to keep setting that up and having to go through this discussion and having to wave, wave it. Um, Let's just eliminate because the, the part of village commercial that is, and I'm thinking there, the kind of forestry is really kind of meant to be a sort of, I think, transition area. So the CBD, the quality of CBD could, could move in that direction. And that, was, and that was part of my thinking. I am now concerned about substance. And I think. There's really three different revenue streams in play that have been discussed tonight. One is the city's general fund. And we're just going to take the instance that was in front of us tonight. They quoted how much tax revenue that's going to generate. Well, that goes into the general fund, and the city council distributes how they please every year. So that's one. And, and as the mayor said, that sometimes they do distribute some of those general funds into parking lot and street infrastructure. There is the parking and loop fund, 
which applicants volunteer to contribute to, and that sits until city council decides to use it. And sometimes they have used it. They would use it in a village commercial area, or they might use it in a central business district area or somewhere else in the city. Um, but that's another revenue stream. And the third revenue stream talking about is that TIF increment financing that goes directly to the DBA. Um, and then the DBA administrates that, and they choose a variety of things that they do with it. Might be events, might be parking, maintenance, operation, and creation, um, or um, they might be infrastructure, or sometimes they might contribute some things back to the city and vice versa, because it's a, it's a partnership. When it's, anything is outside that DDA, again, you don't have those guaranteed funds. Now, some of the funds, whether it's the parking and the fund or the general fund, may well go to that, but you have no guarantees or guardrails as to where that money goes. <coughs> Are the businesses required to um, contribute to the DDA? It's kept in the tax increment finance. So that's where it's so it. Yeah. Right. So a portion of the taxes that they pay goes to the DDA. Or uh, and it doesn't increase their taxes. No, no. Okay, so our DDA does not or has not um, instituted that two percent administrative fee. They haven't levied that on the businesses. They could, but they have not. So that's something. So yeah, I, I think there's a couple of issues going on here. One of the things we talked about during those uh, subcommittee committee meetings. One of them was the uh, fees, the nature of the fees in lieu of uh, parking, which are unusually high indexed. So traditionally, other, in most other communities, those are a contribution to offset. They're not trying to buy parking. So our council at some point took the $2,500 fee and made it $9,500 because they got distracted on this issue of, well, they need to buy, pay for parking for us. And somebody decided, this was years ago, that $9,500 buys a parking space, but $2,500 doesn't. So we're, we're leaving money on the table. That's, that's traditionally not what it's supposed to be. Because one of the things that does is grab money from people that are leasing buildings, who may be there for five years until their lease runs up and they're gone, and they have paid for potentially parking spaces in, in, the, in the village, in the city. So that's one area I think is of concern I have, and that's with council, probably not us, because yeah. they may themselves set that up. The second thing is the whole issue of village commercial and our efforts to make this a more urban ordinance and less suburban. When everybody gets all spun up about the number of parking spaces we are requiring on this site and giving away money to these you know, business owners, uh, I was really disappointed in the presentation, but I, I'm not going to talk about that, but the, just in general with parking, a more urban ordinance, and this is an arbitrary thing. We decide what is sufficient parking in, a, in an ordinance district. So getting all excited about, we have decided they need all these parking spaces in a, right next to the downtown. If you imagine Aubrey's needing 88 parking spaces. That project never would exist. In a lot of these small sites in the, in, the, in the city, they cannot park. If it was a parking lot, they wouldn't get that number of spaces. So what we're saying is you're creating a demand per our ordinance for a lot of parking spaces. And then we're complaining that it isn't possible for you to have your project and put all these parking spaces there. And therefore you have to pay us to use the parking spaces we already have and then potentially contribute to others. So I think this is a village commercial as it's written is, is too much of a suburban ordinance. It's, it's still requiring way too much parking this close to the city. And I think that's a mistake because we don't want that. We're not, we're, this is a, this, that's like a good example, but we're not about expanding parking in the city. We're about wanting a more vibrant, um, activated downtown. And we, we can't always have both. And if, the, and if the choice is to have more, <coughs> Developments that people enjoy and are going to come to Dexter to enjoy, and and as opposed to more parking lots, I would I would take the building, and I, I think that this has to go again with making the ordinance in general more of an urban ordinance and less of a suburban ordinance. 
If you love suburban ordinances, you'll love the country market giant parking lot over there because that's what we, that wasn't their idea, that was our idea. So, so there's a couple of other ideas that are on this slide that we have discussed as a subcommittee before we went to um, no parking required for village commercial space and CBD. And I, I just want to point out the two pictures. You know, one's Grand and the other is Second Street. Both are proposed to be zoned in village commercial. They're two different places. Um, so they might require two different standards, um, which we could look at. Um, but also, Prior to that, what we had said is that um, anything in village commercial, 50% of on street parking or spaces in a municipal parking lot, 500 feet of the site proposed can be counted towards the parking requirements with a payment and lieu option for the remainder of the spaces. We did that because then you could take into account the on street parking everywhere within, and, and 500 feet is generally. Um, you know, you already have that, um, I think, for, you ha already have that in your ordinance for um, anywhere with a shared parking agreement that's on site. Um, but I've seen it in many, many, many ordinances at 500 feet generally is where you want that parking, that shared parking of the, the other parking that serves the site to be. Um, so that's another idea. Or another thing that you can do is just <coughs> a certain percentage for village residential sites. Say if we want 50% parking, you know, we're only requiring 50% of the parking for a village commercial because if you look at where they are, um, they are in either in the village flat or next to the downtown. And so people are more likely to be able to walk there as a more walkable area rather than um, rather than what you have a situation that's on any bigger road, especially Dexter and River Road, where there's no on-street parking in Dexter and Dexter. So Throwing those out there, I'd like some information, some opinions from planning commissioners now as to where is the best option to go with village commercial parking in terms of requirements or leaders. I think so, it should be drastically reduced. Oh, sorry. Okay. So probably not surprising. I'm on the opposite top here. I think our, our parking regulations as they currently are work. And I think that this is a town that is vibrant and full of growth and in demand. And um, <coughs> I think they allow us to make site by site determinations as experts, which we are. And a good example is Erratic Ales versus the Encore versus this project. In each case under the present, rules we applied our own local expertise we guided the project <coughs> two or three cases two of the three cases were done we got to a good outcome that everybody was happy with um you know even in the case of erratic ales they ended up paying for parking they just paid a much less okay. amount we didn't wait for them. um and that's something city council Correct. And that's their ballot. And I think they're entitled to do whatever they want to do there. And, and another reason why I think it works is because of what Sean was talking about. And what I think Sean was trying to demonstrate there was you know, sort of a little, hey, it's not just the DDA. You know, you guys, we pay for stuff down in the DDA too. And we get parking in lieu funds. We don't get them all the time, but we get them, we use them. And, you know, I, I felt like he was trying to say, the last time we had him, we used it to improve on street parking. Like, to me, that's what those funds should be used for. Like, if we had enough of them, like, I don't know, maybe we build a parking structure like that person suggested to me. Can't ever see it in Dexter, but I have a friend who grew up in Northville and he said he could never imagine a parking structure in Northville. I don't know. But we have flexibility. We are in demand. So it's not like this is being held back in any way. I mean, I agree with what Tom says about country market. The parking lot, it's not attractive. It's too much. But I imagine over time, we'll adjust. There are outlots there that are not developed. That's part of why it looks the way it does. Um, I think the current standards work. That's my perspective. They give us flexibility. They favor us, not developers. Preston, carrying on that. 
I agree with him. I, I think that with especially with parking span standards, giving the flexibility on a case by case for businesses because you look at what's there, where they're at, I think it is <coughs> advantageous to us to have that flexibility. And I think it's important at the same time that depending on the business and the usage, like like some businesses won't get used all the time. Some businesses will be. So the parking requirements are there for them. And I think case by case, that's what we're looking at. So that's just. I still think we have too much. <laughs> we were going to ask for too much parking. Um, I, I, I like the idea of flexibility, and, but I, I feel like we may be giving ourselves too much flexibility because it's so. <coughs> um, and I, um, and I, I really am, I would really like to see the sort of that bar, you know, village commercial right adjacent to, to town development in a nice way. You know, it's, essentially, it expands the sort of gestalt of. Of the central business district. And, um, and I think too much parking. Is and we're, we're, I think Dexter is a long way from having a parking problem. And, you know, go to Chicago, you know, to get a park for a lot of money. You know, it's, um, it, you know, but people park in front of my house and to, to go to town. And, um, it's another walk. It's another <clears throat> walk, and that and we're kind of at the end of, you know, Dexter Day's parking. You know, that finally they <coughs> know where I am, and it's it's another walk. So I, I just don't think we have a problem. But anyway, mm -hmm. well, there's mm -hmm. Karen, I don't disagree with yeah. you that we don't have a parking problem right now. Right. I don't want to say that. <laughs> I don't disagree with you at all. I just think you know. Well, I appreciate the flexibility issue. And I appreciate that all businesses are not the same in terms of sort of what they're doing. But that should then maybe be rolled more into. And, it, and in some ways, the way we've structured it now is that this kind of business, we're going to need this, but I still think that it's just too high. It's just too high. Yeah, I, I want to say, yeah, I, I you know, I, I agree with Kira. Um, I think one of the problems with the challenges with flexibility is it, it, it makes it more difficult for businesses to plan around their ordinance. If there's too much, if there's a lot of flexibility, they don't know what to expect. So it, it makes it challenging for them. And I, and I think, again, I think there is a very specific difference between a suburban ordinance and an urban ordinance. And I think ours is always. At least since I've been here, has been more of a suburban ordinance. Yeah, meaning that it doesn't it doesn't respect the value of density. It respects the value of parking. And I don't drive through Dexter and think, man, I wish we had more parking lots. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, I mean, there was a real yeah, flaw in that true. presentation tonight. I thought when they had pages, well, I'm exaggerating. They had a lot of reasons why they should get this parking waiver, and one of them was precedent, precedent setting. And I thought, oops. That, that's the one you want to just kind of soft pedal because basically they're saying if we give them a break, then we could just set a precedent and we'll have to give everybody a break. Well, and I, you know, I think putting ourselves in that position where, and you know, Radic Gales, I mean, I'm really glad it, it, it worked out the way it did, but that's now being seen as what we did for them, us. You know, and and I, I, I just don't think it's a good I don't know, practice to. Build a standard too high with the expectation that anytime we want to, we can lower that standard. I just don't think that's. Well, right. and that kind of in between what you're saying and what Tom's saying is that's the reason that we put together a proposal that 50% of the required parking, up to 50% of the required parking, could be taken care of by on street parking or municipal parking lots within 500 feet. Yeah. Because that's site context sensitive. Yes. Um, and it gives the applicant some guidance as to what's going to be recognized. Because, because yes, and it's other than the fifty percent number, that's basically what you did with the red gifts. 
You'll do it. But okay. that's basically what you did with the red yeah. yeah. Here's <laughs> why I have a real problem with that statement. Okay. Because you're allowing new businesses to count parking spots that are already being used by existing businesses. And maybe that wouldn't be so bad, but then you're allowing the next new business to do the same thing and the next new business to do the same thing with no adjustment. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, it's the equivalent of voodoo economics. You're treating these parking spots like they're an unlimited resource when they are an absolutely limited resource and not just a limited resource, but a limited resource that we're treating like they're already not being used when in reality they're already being used. And so I hate that. Okay. <laughs> I hate it. And because the more growth we approve, the more like magical thinking it is because those spots are already being used. And like, so for instance, not take, not throwing rocks, but your half mile thing is counting parking spots that we already counted for erratic yells. Like part of why we gave erratic yells we were all comfortable with that right was because Based on parking in its vicinity we didn't do the five minute walk right but now some of that parking in the vicinity <laughs> was within your circle that we were looking at tonight right it came up to so we're we'll, so walks. now now we're double count and the next time we're going to be triple count so under this standard and the time after that we're going to be quadruple count mm -hmm. and that's just magical thinking mm -hmm. i mean that my thought is not Again, Karen is right. Like we don't have. We never <laughs> Did you just say that again? Well, <laughs> say it in front of my children. So far. Um, but we also have a huge new condo development that I don't think is even halfway occupied right now downtown. The Broward development. Oh, the, the Grand. I Grand, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, Grand Street. Yeah. Grand Street. Yes, it's not. It's. 30, almost 40%. Um, Not full. 40% full almost? Well, I, so I think about it as sold. Oh, okay. Not, it, there's more than that actually under construction. Right. But sold okay. is 30 something oh. of 76 units. And I raise that only because it's going to bring more people up and down people visiting those units, people delivering to those units. Right. We haven't even seen the full impact of that. And so, again, I think we should be looking for the future because we're still in very active development. And the reason I like the flexibility here is like, none of us, I don't think, think on this new parcel that there should be 80 plus spots. <laughs> I think, but what I like, and maybe you don't like, is that we can charge them we can tell the city council to offer them a deal to pay for forgiving those other 40 something spots. I really like that. Well, I do too. <laughs> I think the project that's spending this much money should want to contribute to, you know, to the resources that we're using. But in theory, if enough people on the planning commission just want to give them those spots for free next meeting, we will. And I like that flexibility. Like if, if in a month, if in a month, the majority of my fellow board members vote that way, I'll vote no. But that'll be the consensus of our expertise. And I love that we have expertise and, you know, a mix of people who have been here a very long time, people who have been here a moderate long time, people who have been here, you know, a few years. I, and I think that's, I'd rather put the power in process the planning commission and the city council than seated in the ordinance particularly for this 50 percent street parking i'll never okay well, <laughs> it's, it's 9 30 you still have yeah i was gonna say so true um, um, and that's that's a good suggestion wait what time uh <laughs> Wait, we'll, we'll almost seal it up. Let's so, I, I love to agree with people on this board, and, uh, but I can't always do that. <laughs> number one, uh, parking is not a fixed number. Sean just mentioned adding parking on Grand Street. We had parking all the time. 
That's a that's a one of the functions of the community is to manage the parking and add parking. We added a whole parking lot behind Aubrey's. We do it all the time. We expand parking. It's not a fixed number. It'll never be a fixed number. The, the city can the, the city can buy par property in and pave it and turn it into another parking lot. So it's actually the opposite of that. It could be not unlimited additional parking, but there's practical uh, way to expand the parking in, in the city. Secondly, every parking space every day is not occupied all the time. It's not spoken for 24 seven or even when things are busy. It's there's never, I've never seen I had a problem parking in, in the city, driving through it. So the, the idea that, that all the parking is completely filled all the time, every time a business comes in, we're taking somebody else's parking is not accurate at all. Um, it, it, we have young people in this room and they need to come home and go to bed. Right. So they can, the students can leave. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's true. <laughs> so this is what I'd like to do. Okay, so is, you got a lot of input on parking. I got so. a lot of input in parking. Obviously, this is something that needs a fuller discussion with yeah. more decision makers in the room, maybe <laughs> that joint meeting where there's yeah, some, that's... some different things that are offered. Yeah. Um, in terms of choices. Um, I'm gonna go through some other things quickly and then I hand something out to you that I will ask you your opinion on again and that <laughs> be hopefully uh, guys... again another point of discussion. So uh thank you. Um Article five parking, um, if we go to the next slide, Michelle, um, there's a pull-off loading area for professional um, services, retail and non-industrial when it's proposed. So it looks a little different than um, right now your ordinance it requires a pretty industrial. Yeah. Um, it's huge. Yeah. And then also that the loading spaces requirements are proposed by use and size of building um, so that they vary. Um, You've had a lot of waivers asked by retail and things like that. So um, taking that into account, or especially office uses, which are more likely to have uh, an Amazon delivery van than anything else. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Why is it called a pull? Um, so that you're pulling in, you're kind of pulling in rather than most of the loading spaces are designed for you to back into, um, or that's the intent, especially one that big, it's for a truck, it's for a yeah. truck, quite frankly. Um, all right, that was everything on Article 5 that I want to highlight a lot. Again, a lot of it was cleaning it up, moving it around, putting it in a way that it flowed better. Um, on Article 6, landscaping, um, the trees not permitted list in Section 1604C is proposed to be updated. Um, Section 606 tree replacement standard proposes the Planning Commission allow up to 50% of required landscaping to be satisfied by replacement trees. Um, and then um, Chet Hill, who I hope is still in the line, um, brought this up and I, I give it, gave out this to everybody. So Chet, this is 606 replacement tree standards, item A. Um, he mm -hmm. felt that this table, which I handed out to you, um, is woefully, I think, um, in terms of the requirement to replace a tree. So this is when a tree is removed, what replacement trees have to be put on site. A lot of communities require inch by inch. Um, you, this is your standard table. I know in this track changes, it says that it's new. It just, it, it moved. We moved it from one place to another. So that's the reason it's green in the track changes. But the text itself hasn't been changed except for the parentheses with the numeral in it. Um, and so um, we had never heard from anyone that they felt that this wasn't the appropriate number. I know Chuck, um, and I don't know if he's still on the line, Michelle. Yep, he's still there. Um, I'm here. Some about, um, what could be there. Again, I've seen inch by inch, or I've seen it um, kind of on the slides. So, Chuck? I'm not looking at the uh, table right now myself, but my basic point is, and it has to do with the land, um, landmark trees, replacement of land, landmark trees. And it had to, from my perspective, it had to do with a ZBA issue about a year ago, where a large, large uh, tree, uh, landmark tree was, uh, in my opinion, was gonna die in a, after they get done building within a few years. But at the same time, it raised the question as to all a developer or builder has to do is re 
take down a tree, any landmark tree, basically, if I remember correctly, and replace it with five two and a half inch trees, which is woefully inadequate for a landmark tree, especially if the intent is to preserve these landmark trees. And that's what I think we're all about here. So I'm basically suggesting revising that upwards. And I proposed a couple of suggestions for doing that so that it isn't easier to remove the tree than it is um, to save <clears throat> to save it and that's what that's the way it's written right now so yeah. i had some other comments in there as well but like i say i'm not looking at the table myself so i've forgotten specifically what they are right um so landmark trees it's five trees of at least two and a half inch caliper 23.9 or larger non-native four trees um, 12 to 23.9, three trees, and then 8.8 to 11.5.9, two trees, so at least 25 inch. Well, if we want feedback, I think that's right. Okay. Yeah. On, I mean, the, on the landmark trees. Yeah, the landmark trees, because you want it to be more of a deterrent. Yeah. Makes sense. Right. So now the question I have for you all, um, and you too, Chet, I don't know if you can hear me. So, I can. So, Usually, what comes before you are the 12 inch to 23.9 or the 8 to 11.9, and mostly the 8 to 11.9. And nine times out of 10, when a development comes in, you've weighed the requirement, especially when there's been a number of them. Exist. Right. You've, you've done this on nearly every site plan that's come through. Right. With, with the exception of the ones in the industrial park. Um, um, so if you want to raise the number required to replace a landmark, the question I've got for you is the, the number of trees or the caliper, or is it a combination? Do you want to also look at reducing the number for the others because you you wait the longest. What? Uh, <clears throat> pardon me. I'm getting hoarse here. I've been talking so much. <laughs> um, what I was suggesting is basing it on the caliper of the tree. Um, if a caliper, if a tree is 26 inches, uh, the caliper, then what you do if you're going to replace it with the standard two and a half inch, then you divide that by two and a half inches to come up with the total of number of trees um, to be replaced, or I mean, to be um, planted, or larger trees of the same species. There's a couple of ways you can do that. Um, but at least, and that would cover your the, the issue that you just raised, Michelle. Uh, the smaller trees could be based on the caliper of them as well. Um, if you use some standard for um, the number of trees that you replace it with based on the trees that you're being removed, if you follow what I'm saying. Yeah, based on what's, re that's like Ann Arbor does it basically by the, the amount of DBH of the existing tree you're removing and there's a formula to replace it. Right, and I've seen an inch by inch. Yeah, so, there's a couple of, or seventy five. Yeah, some of them is a little. Some of them are a little bit excessive, I think, for an hour, But I think, uh, but upgrading these probably would be good for the landmark one. Well, here's interesting question: to have the NRB perspective, does having those <laughs> different criteria actually result in more landmark trees being preserved, or ultimately? Yeah. Yeah, it's just not a lot of money. To no, I think it does. I absolutely, I think it does. But also, we they have to do alternatives plans. There's a lot more detail to remove a landmark tree in an You really, really, really have to want to remove it. You got to provide alternatives analysis and things. But yeah, I think it definitely people design around them. Absolutely. To do it or they Well, I mean, <laughs> I don't know. I'm asking developers' point of view, but I don't know. I, but that's what. Yeah, right. I think it does have a different. If it's a particularly large heritage tree of some nature. Like say one in somebody's front yard that's a city removed. He might be entitled to like talk about my tree a couple of years ago. Oh Michelle's not even paying attention. I would have been entitled to like 20 trees on my property. 
the other thing you can do is that that landmark tree can replace. So if you have the planning commission can allow replacement trees to set aside up to 50% of the landscaping requirements, the charitable, so that mm. that landmark tree then has a value that they don't have to put more landscaping on. The problem with that then is sometimes that landmark tree doesn't provide what yeah. that other landscaping was meant to do, whether it's screening or whatnot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's true. All right. Michelle, maybe you can remind us why we've waived so many of these requirements. Uh, we, we, I think it's because the this is just another tax really. It, it's a, a lot of times the sites can, can't accommodate that number of trees, and we know it. Mm -hmm. Our landscaping ordinance is already very generous, so we end up um, with a, a tree fund where we're telling people, you know. The business person that they they here's another place you can give us more money more of your money while you're trying to develop here. Um, as somebody who's I actually have a project in Ann Arbor where we have four landmark trees, um, three of them are along a, along a right of way, and we set the building back to design around them not because it had anything to do with the tree fund or the cost, but because they were nice uh, trees. And it wasn't because we were forced to do it that our client could afford it for a place and it would have went money that went would have went into the city's um, tax base, but because it was uh, it was a good thing to do and it was positive for the project. The other one was in a place where the, the buildings couldn't accommodate it. Um, it would have uh, basically made the site uneconomically develop, and that's why we took it out. So while it's easier to cast people who want to invest here as being a problem that need to be tightly uh, monitored and taxed. Often there are people that, that actually want uh, a really nice project and also in addition to us actually do like trees. So I, I think this can easily spin out of control and just be another cash grab for the business community is all it becomes. So if that's what we want to do, we want to make it too expensive to more and more expensive to develop here. That that's what we can do. And, and this is also the all, even the idea of a landmark tree. We're talking about time. We're, we're we're basically assigning value to time because all the trees that survive long enough will become landmark trees eventually. That's true. Okay. So thank you for the guidance on that. Um, if you can make some edits based on what we shared. Um, the other things that um, highlighted are pretty, um, we've already talked about um, that 50% of the land required landscaping, the tree replacement standards propose that the planning commission allow up to 50% of required landscaping to be satisfied by the replacement trees. Um, and that's again, as a may and the planning commission can. So that's a judgment call that you would make. Um, the trees not permitted list is proposed to be updated. Um, or yes, we're on landscaping there. Um, for the form-based districts, I don't know how many people noticed that in the form-based code, the, for the different building types, the screening of the parking lot varies based on that building type. Um, instead of um, having a general um, requirement. Um, so for instance, this is a, this is a, um, a, a two-story mixed-use building, and that's got a wall and landscaping, um, like the multifamily apartment, multifamily building that just had a, 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 a hedge, um, so it was only landscaping, it didn't have a wall. Um, then, um, if you go to the next page, the recommended plant materials lists are proposed for deletion. Um, and then in um, next slide, something that may help with the waivers is that we looked at changing the screening between land uses. So when they are, um, this is a reduction in that if it's like to like, there's not a, there's not a requirement for a screen. Um, the screen one is one ornamental, one evergreen tree for every 40 feet. Um, which is a reduction. Um, the screen two is one ornamental or one evergreen tree and seven upright shrubs um, for every 30 zennial feet. And then the three has been strengthened. Um, so that's 
between really different land uses, um, one ornamental tree, evergreen tree, and four, four upright shrubs. So that'll still be that thick um, landscape screen in between, let's say, the um, industrial park and adjacent residential. You can go up to seven. Also, we updated the list of landmark trees. There's tree preservation techniques have been enhanced um, and allowances for preserved trees to satisfy landscaping requirements. Um, Chet it made a great um, suggestion for that the drip line to be defined because that's where you're going to put the fence. Um, and then also to show as a dotted line on the landscape plan, um, thing based on um, some thoughts that I had when idly thinking about your zoning ordinance is maybe that in the landscape plan to have a list of waivers requested that needs to be there on the landscape plan as a listed item. A lot of times we're going back and forth with the applicant and we're trying to infer whether they are asking for a waiver or whether they just missed it or whatnot. Um, and I think it would be interesting to know whether we need that complete list at preliminary or at final. Um, it might be better to have that complete list at final, but to have some a general request at preliminary. So when they're separated, the some, you know, the idea of preliminary is to look at it in concept. Wouldn't that help design? But sometimes that design. If you don't require full landscaping to find out, it's hard to make a decision. Yeah, of false, right? So, right. Like, and, and what's okay. the waiver? So yeah, exactly. Yeah. We don't know what. Yeah. Um, and then finally, um, the last slide is just de definitions, um, and you know, obviously, we're going to update all of those graphics. Um, there's been some new definitions added there. Some have been removed, um, but it's a big, big section. Um, and we'll go over it at the end too, just to make sure that every definition there is used somewhere in the zoning ordinance. So, I think one of the definitions we really have to add that we don't currently have with this graphic is a, um, <clears throat> is the, uh, when you front line, when you, Rear line on both streets. Oh, a through lot? We don't currently have that. Okay. Do we count that as two fronts? Right now, we don't address it because it has to come up, but I have a feeling it's going to be coming up. And like, what about a corner lot? Is corner lot, too, yeah. Yeah. And there's are two fronts, fronts, right? Two fronts. Yeah. Two fronts, two sides. Not a rear. No rear. Well, I know that you have other agenda. Okay. Items. So, if there's any parting words of wisdom, things that you need, um, be happy to hear them. Oh, we got all kinds of words of wisdom. Okay. Thank you. I have one. Oh, I did. Yeah. Jamie Griffith's comments, and and most of them were sort of, you know, form oh, style. Yeah. And, uh, but she did raise uh, the question of why a couple of properties went from. Um, Village commercial to you know, anyway, she was right. They just sort of in the map. Which ones? Um, I'm sorry, this is so precious time. Okay, I think they're, they're, they're on Grand Street and they went from village residential to village commercial on Grand, yeah, on Grand. And and we never really, I don't remember talking about. So it must be it, because it's, it's based on the master plan. Yeah, it was so we have to go on, back and look at the master, master plan. plan. Okay. Oh, no. Yeah, right about there. Yeah, yes. they're probably in there, I think. Yeah, yeah. So so right in there. Yeah, it's right Those there. are in the Baker Road corridor. So they're probably zone village commercial now, but then um, That's, okay. they're proposed to be that because this is the form base. I think also, um, yeah. um, okay. let me see where, where am I? Here's the players. I think these two, probably two, she was asking about um, that are long. 
No, I think they were and really more where the pink is. But the pink is. Yeah. yeah, that's to implement the, but this is the PUD, and then this is to implement the master plan, because those were planned as, yeah, okay. as village commercial. Um, yep. So I think the village residential now that village commercial does allow some of the same residential uses. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing was, and you've got it circled on that map. We decided that that should go. Yeah. Oh. Yes. Oh, yeah. That was, we, we discussed that last time. Just I'm, I'm not going to make any edits yeah. until <laughs> we heard from everybody. And every time we go in and open something up, yeah. yes. well, we appreciate it. <laughs> All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right. I think with that, we'll move on to the business item B. If anybody needs a quick break, otherwise, I think we're, we'll probably, I don't know how long this will take, but. It will take as long as we, as, have as we want it to. That's correct. Um, Mike, as usual, has um, put together a very detailed <clears throat> update of the changes from the previous uh, CIP to what's currently being proposed. You have a summary table in front. Um, there are a couple that still have some pending updates, but um, they're not so substantive that it should prevent you from what our next step is, which is set the public hearing. Um, it's basically tweaking the language and the, uh, the costs. Um, and so those are things that come from engineering and Justin. So um, uh, there is a new wastewater fuel station in, if you look on page 993, um, that's proposed in the sanitary system. We're still waiting for some updates on that, along with an automated gate and security doors. Um, it's, um, it's just something that we have to get a little bit more information, but it should be uh, available for the public hearing if you should so uh, propose it. Updates on, uh, on the regional projects, Ken, the Dexter Chelsea, as, um, as Sean identified, or um, Allison identified, we did have a meeting with the Road Commission last week. And so the updates we're waiting from them on are just the update to the illustration um, um, and some cost numbers. Other than that, the worksheet is, is, is going to be um, uh, ready to go. We've got on uh, page 995 starting, You've got the, um, uh, the executive summary starting to show what the six year funding need, $12 million plus, the first year funding of 1.775. Um, there's a variety of projects. Um, this this um, six year funding program decreased by 9% from the previous year. Um, um, and there are uh, uh, several projects that um, have, have come into, as well as have been removed from the, uh, the plan. Um, and those all get documented. <clears throat> There's a total cost by project category. So for each of our categories, identifies the total number of projects, the total six year project cost, and then it breaks out the very first year. Um, again, priorities are also uh, summarized. So you've got a number of projects. Uh, one is urgent, 58 are important, 20 are desirable. There are three that are to be determined, but you have a total of 82 projects. And then the percent of that breakdown. Um, and then we start to break down the major projects. Um, those are listed in that uh, the table on page 996. And then, of course, the new and amended projects also get listed out separately, in addition to that summary table. Completed and removed projects are listed on page 997. And then, of course, we always have the funding needs and sources table that breaks out which funding sources are being used in which of the different funding years. Page 998, you have the justification score, so your, your top, uh, project score, 
um, are listed in that first table. There's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's eight of them that come in at 15s. You have um, about as many um, that come in as a 14. <clears throat> but we all know that the project score butts heads with priority. And it, in, in the end, it's what we can afford. So. And then, of course, you've got all of the individual project worksheets. Um, I can try and answer any questions that you've got regarding this. Um, like I said, any details that aren't currently here are um, minor and will be by the time the public hearing work is scheduled. And I'm hoping that you're doing that for April. Yep. Um, so, and we yeah, could actually make a motion now. Yeah. You, you could. So, and I will add one other thing. Um, it is my fervent desire and hope that we will have an actual software program instead mm -hmm. of relying on this work uh, network. Um, labor intensive. Excel spreadsheet um, that has macros and formulas, and because it does, we had to use the consultant this year. So, yeah, is this this is the same format you guys have been using for a long time, right? The right. Same programs, right? It's yeah. always been an Excel spreadsheet. Um, the first few years I was doing it, the micro, the macros, formulas were all broken, and so I literally was doing everything in the middle. Um, Michael came on, on the scene, he worked with OHM to fix all of those macros and formulas, but it's still very labor intensive. I am not a program. I don't know how to do those yeah. formulas. Um, I want a program that is like our building department software, you plug in the information, you generate the report. So hopefully we will have that for next year. Good CIP. <laughs> it is a good CIP. It's a very good CIP. All right. It's an awesome CIP. CIP. Okay. Um, Are you prepared to schedule the public hearing? Questions. Yeah. I mean, we can always have more debate, of course, and we can question more, but to schedule the public hearing. Um, sure. So um, I guess would somebody like to make a motion to schedule the public hearing for schedule the public April? Hearing. What's the date? April 4th. April 4th. Schedule. Okay. Move, move party. Sport. 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 Uh, wise. Okay. Um, oh, uh, I guess we should take it. was a motion by Mr. Carter. Yes, uh, support by Wise. Um, do we have any other discussion? Yeah, I mean, we, we can have continual discussion next month as well, but otherwise. Okay, I guess, um, I guess we just do it some of those. Uh, all in favor of the CIP public hearing for April 4th? Say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Okay, it is scheduled. All right, so, um, well, I guess we close that, but if there's any other final questions, otherwise, using my, my agenda's next cover here, but I believe that was the last item. It is. Okay, so mm -hmm. then, oh, we have one more opportunity for citizens pushing the best efficient. <laughs> okay, sure. Is there anybody <laughs> online that would like to address the commission? There's no line. I want to give Chet credit for hanging out. Yeah, you Chet. Wow. He's okay. ready to go. All right. So with that, um, is there a motion to adjourn? Move we'll by uh, support Roberts. All favor of adjournment. Say aye. 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 Wow. All right. Thank you all. That was a bonus. <laughs> ah, that's almost overtime. All.